Welcome to the OSR's podcast, where we talk about RuneScape-related things of RuneScape-related content creators. I'm in that cow, one of your hosts, followed by... What is going on, boys? Rexy, as always. And it's me, Rice Cup. So, am I going to introduce... No, I'm going to introduce, okay, man. What is that. wrong with you, buddy? So, <laughs> Nate, you Bonesaw, we have a very special <laughs> guest. Bonesaw is ready. What's up, buddy? Bonesaw is ready. Bonesaw's ready. <laughs> Now, do you want to tell us where that's that's from, right? Originally, I know, but if you want to share with the the boys where so, it was ready. A number of years ago, one of my favorite uh, movies growing up was uh, Spider Man, and there's a character yeah. inside that uh, movie called Bone Saw. So I always liked that character. He was one of my favorite characters that stood out to me because he was absolutely jacked, and he had two girls next to him in the cage. You know what I mean? So <laughs> like, I, I'm gonna go with Bone Saw. So not only was it my alias on RuneScape, but for all the other different games that I've played, even IRL, some of my friends still call me Bonesaw, so that's where I got it. Yeah, what do you, what do you think? <laughs> what do you think, though? If, if this video gets 500 likes, we can do a round two at some point. So we 500 the... likes! Hells yeah! yeah. yeah. Here, you know what? Alright, yeah. I'll, I'll slap all right. it in the beginning, alright? So we'll start yeah, from it's here. Worth it. it's so, worth it. we just had an amazing podcast with Bonesaw, and uh, if you guys want a V2, try to hit 500 likes, and maybe next week we'll... Uh... <laughs> We'll get into some even spicier subjects, man. More uh, personal drama. It, it, more personal drama. Oh, uh, yes. OSR's podcast, man. And, and with Ice Damn. Giant, I'm wondering, do you just really like Ice Giants? Because I know your Twitch was Ice Giant 99 for a bit, and then you changed it. So, What's... so the name uh, Ice Giant 99 was actually because Ice Giant back in Rinsky Classic was the uh, largest monster in the game, so it's the highest really? level. That was yeah, the largest monster was, uh, back in the day. For it real. was, and. Uh, 99 was obviously the highest level you can get in the game, so I just combined the two so it could be the, <laughs> you know, to be the very best. That's yeah. such a cool name. <laughs> if if Ice I did, Giants I know that. never, <clears throat> if they never existed, would you be Moss Giant 99 or <laughs> whatever was before? It, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's kind of cool. Okay, I didn't know that, man. But yeah, welcome to the podcast. Glad to have you. I've I've known this guy for a bit. I think everyone's known him for a bit in the community. Uh, when did you start making RuneScape videos originally? Like, when was the first one you ever put out? Uh, so it was uh, back in 2008, and YouTube was a very different place back then. I mean, YouTube was a place. Uh, the reason why it has the word you in it was it was a place for creators. Yeah. So back then, uh, the way you were discovered, actually, even before that, skip ahead a couple of years, <laughs> there was no such thing as social media, right? So we'll no. begin there. MySpace. Yeah. Uh, th even before MySpace, actually, RuneScape was uh, came up before. It was I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was never on MySpace, yeah. so I just remember so, it yeah. being there. So RuneScape actually came out um, way before MySpace came out. That was around the time like Napster. You guys remember Napster was around? I heard about yeah, it. I remember, I remember that. Young the dictionary? Nap no. Web so Napster was where people got all their music back music, in the day. Music, right? Yeah. There was, okay. And there was LimeWire right. and Lap Lapster. So it was uh, also when Lime George Wire, W. Bush Lime was Wire. the 43rd president of the United States. So it was yeah. that around George that era. Yeah. So hey, How many viruses did you get? Yo, wait. Get? Should we ask the community wait. a question, dude? What's the oh. first song you downloaded on LimeWire chat? <laughs> Or oh, what's God. the first virus you downloaded? Are we, are we live right now? Like that? <laughs> no, no, just not. good community good questions. Community. Oh, the community chat. Okay. Yeah. Wait, Nate wasn't wasn't the guy who uh, owned Napster? Wasn't he the guy that went on to create Pirates Bay? Was it the same guy? I'm not sure about that. I know um, that guy I got arrested. Because I'm pretty sure that the guy from Napster was American, right? Isn't the the Pirate Bay? Uh, I'm sure there's some legal shit. That yeah, but involved. obviously later that Napster got shut down. But back on uh, the RS thing, yeah, RuneScape Classic was crazy, bro. It was uh. It's so different than what RS2 was, but what, what a lot of people don't know about RuneScape uh, 1 was that there was actually no sound, no music in RuneScape. Oh, really? Classic, yeah. I didn't know that. Also, when you were cutting trees, right, there was no such thing as uh, oak trees. It was just regular trees, so you would just be cutting. And um, <laughs> back when I started RuneScape uh, was also in 2001. And back then, I, I didn't have access to my own personal computer because there was one computer in the living room. So I went to the library to play RuneScape for 30 minutes a day, sometimes for an hour <laughs> I was allowed to, be, to have it extended. But that's um, kind of how me and my friends play back in the day. And actually, we didn't actually use RuneScape to play the game. We use it as a messaging platform. So we all get on <laughs> and kind of use it as a yeah. social thing back then. So. Yeah, before AIM. <laughs> Before MSN, before there was no such thing as social media, and the internet back then was yeah. starting to actually start to Jesus. mature, right? 
Nate, yeah, did you? Um, yeah, go ahead. Oh, so I was gonna say, Nate, did you hear that uh, uh, classic? Because it used to be a server out, just like old school. They had a little server running, and that's that's gone now. They just they just got it out. I think this year, or last year, they just yeah, uh, last year, this year, or last year. I remember they. I, I was totally took it out. Yeah, yeah they, they closed. They just shut it down. Uh, the reason being was just uh, there was too many glitches bots. found, and they I think couldn't. It was too many bots. Too many bots. Well, they kept finding like yeah. ways to like reset the experience on stuff. There was a lot of, um, it was like an experiment thing for people. Old school classic because it was such an old game. They would find ways to bug it out, and they didn't. Oh many, yeah. Do you guys know, know how many people were actually playing it actively? Oh, uh, it, it was. It was, it was like active. less than fifty active players. It, it was dead. mostly bot accounts. On the and, last hour, a lot of yeah. them got together though. It was really cool, but then. Yeah. yeah, it was it was sad when it ended, but like the reality, because there were so few players playing it, there was no maintenance at all. So yeah. people had been bought on it solidly. Their accounts hadn't logged out for like two years, and they could have been locked into an instance with like an NPC or mining something, and no one could ever get to what they were doing. And it was never like reset or anything. I, I I'm not sure. You could probably tell me, but no, I think that, no, that you don't yeah. even get logged out on the game. You could just stay logged in for as long as you want. I remember that's uh, why they put in something called sleeping bags in a uh, RuneScape Classic to combat yeah. macros. So when you, you couldn't actually gain XP in the game if you hit a certain fatigue level. So what you had to do is you, you had to go to a bed to sleep, and uh, or use the the um, the sleeping sleeping mat. I love that idea. I remember yeah. there was a, what is that the um, fatigue timer or whatever, right? There was that. Yeah, that, that mm. for sure. I yeah. think um, if I remember rightly as well like a bunch of npcs had been like permanently moved in game like players have found a way to like move npcs into places where they shouldn't be and they just never got reset there's a lot <laughs> like, of, there's there's a lot of, of NPCs, cool things you, you actually uh couldn't um do the quest at the same time as somebody else so if a new quest <laughs> you had added, to wait huh <laughs> you had to wait in a single file line uh which is one of the reasons why i didn't quest much even until recently because i just had those those memories yeah, PTSD. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. Uh, I love that. You had to wait the quest. Uh, you just a single file line, someone cuts in, everyone just oh trash God. talks him. Yeah, but it wasn't him. like that back then. Dude, it was not like that back then. Dude, I'm telling you, back in the olden days of RuneScape, like if you tellied from a fight in RuneScape 2, when it was supposed to be an honor fight, mate, you'd be blacklist. Any honorable clan would not touch you. Maybe when Reign of Terror came to power, you might have just crept in there, but all of the actual honorable clans like um, DI and so on, they just wouldn't touch yeah. you. Yeah. Our ROT was actually a relatively very small clan back then. Like you said, uh, the big clans, obviously DI and uh, DS. But going back to the YouTube question, that's actually where people started to post their videos, which was a DIRS or it was tipped at RuneScape at the time. Yep. Uh, because there was such, no such thing as social media. So that's kind of how you grew like the first 100 views. And back then, the way the meta back then was people yeah, would use only music that environment if you, yeah. if you were to do commentaries it was considered a very odd thing yeah uh until much later uh much much later chris archie the guys like that started doing commentaries and it kind of became the norm but back then people would critique you on your editing style so you had to uh up it. yeah up, <laughs> up music, the end, right? it was like music uh, my chemical yeah. romance evanescence uh, yeah. ramstein those yeah. kind of music was used so that's kind of how people built the following back then was through forums. Yeah, back then, like, it's more like music, editing, timing your clips with the music kind of deal. Yeah. That's the vibe. Just I have to more. say, Nate, you were way before your time of your editing. Like, your Bone Soul video, your Ice Giant 99, your first video on your channel, is it 11? I'm just having a look real quick. I think it's 11 years old. The hey. editing on that video still stands up today it's in 2020. Today. That video is still Which, growing yeah, too. Most people I, I, don't I, do those videos anymore. I, I there were some some vid makers that are just far under uh, underappreciated. I mean, for example, uh, one of my favorites was Taco Wyming, just because of uh, his uh, his music style. Like people like him really brought a different type of music into the, the uh, into the um, the field because there was a period where everybody used the same music. It was. People were using mostly metal, actually, to start out with. And oh, yeah, I love those days. Rock yeah. and kind of emo punk uh, days, like My Chemical Romance music, Yeah, etc. I like the Inflames days. Do you, do, did you watch a lot of PK videos yourself? I'm assuming you did. Do you know a PK era called Skeletor? A Mage Bank. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I what? yeah he, Bro. he dominated the, uh, the Mage Bank. Yeah, man. Like, most of my music taste was literally from watching his videos when I was younger. 
I have like to no check him out. Life. I have never heard of Skeletor. That that sounds amazing. Skeletor. How dare you say his name correctly? correctly. Oh, sorry. Skeletor is uh, Skeletor. based off... Uh, what is that? He-Man? Oh, Skull-Ator. So, Skull-Ator. Skull-Ator is Oh, okay. Skeletor. Oh, no. See, you said... My biggest <laughs> fucking idol this entire time. Uh, fucking you, 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 you can't even say his name right, buddy. No, it's all right, uh, I'm seeing some videos. <laughs> Someone re-uploaded his videos, it looked like. Uh, yeah, I've dude, I re-uploaded some of his videos, man. I actually had the pleasure of messaging him years ago. I was like, hey, I'm like your biggest fan. I found his email somewhere. I don't know where. And I was like, is it okay if I re-upload your YouTube PK videos? Because everyone's removed them. And he was like, hey, man, yeah, sure thing. I have him added now. And occasionally he messages me, dude. <laughs> but I loved his videos back in the day. I love that, man. man. Like, That's sick. Also, uh, interesting fact, I spoke with him. And he said to me in some of these clips, if you look at this clip right now, I don't know if he has it yet. Uh, he's got the Rune Defender. God, look okay? at the Arams. I and love the look of that. Oh, I love the look he, of that so much. Dude, yeah. he said to me that um, he was actually given the Rune Defender by a J-Mod to test it. And this what? was before the actual Rune Defender was even in the game. And this was at the point when the best shields was a, a Rune Kite or a Dragon I Square and a Rune Kite or a, or a Zami book. And apparently the J-Mod gave it to him to test it. And uh, like it wasn't even in the game when he was using this. Dude, like, look at this way old back fucking when. thing, by the way. Look yeah, at the d d Dragon Dagger cool. S, the super poison. Remember that, guys? Yeah, dude. I, I only that. heard rumors. I never played early enough. Always super you could, poison. You could actually make a good uh, time merching the S's, by the way. Merching back then was insane, guys. Yo, Nate, like, when you first got into RuneScape again, old school, didn't you make? Uh, I remember watching your videos, and you would you were in that cave alking and picking up like the nightshade yeah. or something and making poisons. Didn't you make like yeah. bank off that when you first started again? Yeah, no, that's how I funded uh, ninety nine uh, farming. Yeah, that's that dude. Yeah. That's a cool old money maker, Star, man. Old school star was such a crazy dynamic because, like, if you were one of the first people to get high herb. Like I think I think you did one stuff, right? You end, you can make so much money. People yeah. would buy every potion for such a high amount. That's crazy. Just even in general, just to, when uh, OSRS first came out, uh, doing you could the, the little things like buying yeah, dragon so, cars. If you finish so, madness first, like there was money. Everything was a money maker back then. Yeah, I saw room skimmies for seventy k like the first week. It was it was phenomenal. I was like, wow, I've never sold room skim for that high. It was nuts. And then, like, Rune Kites. Like, I, I was one of the few people that knew about Ice ice Trolls. Like, before, you know, people, like... Oh, but oh, yeah. yeah. Is it not? Because I, I did accidentally found... Yeah, yeah. I accidentally found out about these a long time ago when I was, like, a noob. And I, I, I killed one. I was like, Rune Kites, Whoa, what is this? And then no. I was like... And, and then when Osuka came out, I'm like, you know, Ice Trolls exist. I'm going to go there. And I went there. I just kept finding them. <laughs> I was selling them for 120k each. And oh, wow. then, yeah, I made like I made like five mil. And then what happened was some dude hit ninety nine smithing or something like a week after, and then the prices went down to like out price because he just basically just kept making rune kite shields. It was over. Mm -hmm. It was oh, good. Man. It was good while it lasted though. But damn man, that that well, that, that, um, that sweet week or two. Going back to the uh, okay. sorry to cut you off. Uh, going yeah, back to the uh, YouTube question. Yeah. Uh, so. That's kind of how people gathered the views in the beginning, the first couple hundred. And YouTube wasn't out back then, but when YouTube came out, um, people started uh, uploading the videos to YouTube. And even at, at first, that was that met some criticism because people kind of assumed that YouTube was just a platform for people to upload uh, IRL content. But how you actually got found before, like the metrics for that is for every country, right? There was a top 100. So when I upload my videos, it would often get you know, top 50 of Canada. So there would be people what? From that's so cool. that would be watching RuneScape that would be watching my videos just because it's in the top 50, it'd be trending. And uh, actually some people that were actually even Canadian would change their um, region uh, region to Canada just to get to get the extra views because for whatever reason, Canada got a lot of views. So Chris Archer's Canadian. I was Canadian, obviously. And uh, Oh, man, that's, that's why. Kind of how <laughs> YouTube algorithm worked back then. It was it was actually really easy to manipulate as well, so people could really kind yeah. of grow, yeah, find a great. way to grow that. Uh, do you mind now, if I put your video in the background, by the way? I got it up right now. Yeah. Oh, sure, yeah. 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 Old school hey. right here. Oh, super old I, that's I've cool. got a few questions for you, Nate, if you don't mind, mate. So oh, um, sure. you were, like, way ahead of the curve when it comes to your editing back in those days. Like, look at this. Um, I don't even know what's going on half the time. There's got to be, like, four different effects that just hit. <laughs> like, uh, a, a flash. So um, my, my two questions for you, like, dude, 
when I first discovered YouTube back in like 2007, which I think is when it was released, and it was like the Elf Mage Kids Rank era, um, bro, I had no idea how to even record my screen, let alone know what a software was to be able to edit a video. So I don't know if the video on your channel right now, which is 11 years old, which is your first PK video, was your first ever video. But yeah. um, how did you, did you already know how to edit? Did you already know how to like record your screen and stuff? Because it took me years to figure that right, stuff out. You got the panning that's out That's a already. great question. Um, that. That's one of the reasons why a lot of people didn't get back into vid making back then because there just, there just wasn't the technology, right? So uh, I forgot exactly what program I used, but it was what off my was Pro. Maybe and I, explain I this crazy real quick. This video, that's um, this video that you guys are watching off of Adobe uh, After Effects. Oh, damn. Wait, so did you it, say you recorded with a MacBook? MacBook Pro. Uh, Aww, with, you got that fancy stuff, obscure, man. <laughs> obscure program for for that. And it was oh, wow. probably 10 times. It took 10 times longer to edit a video back then just with the tools that I had. But Yeah, probably. Damn. And um, with the Ice Giant Video 1, the Bone Saw is Ready one, uh, what did you edit that with? Because there's there a lot of... There'll be After Effects. Uh, okay, I was going to say, man, because when I first started editing, I started using Sony Vegas, and I never could even get any of my clips to look like yours. And I, that's probably why, because yeah, we have probably different, different effects, stuff. But I mean, honestly, guys, uh, if I if I can go back and re-edit those, it would, the edits would be a lot cleaner. No. But those are I my mean, first... Man, for 11 sure. years ago, yeah, you, did, you did a very good job. <laughs> I appreciate very that. Good job. Like, I look back at my, mine, it's like that, too. Like, I think everybody's got that vibe. It's like, you know... If you have you ever really care about your work quality, you always be like, yeah, the old stuff could be a lot better. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty awesome. Actually, we, we're all video uh, creators here. I just noticed. Hell, <laughs> hell yeah, man! It, like it, it's like a different. Uh, like I, I got into it like way after all the music stuff because nowadays you can't really do that. You know, you can't. No. Really do, um, you know those. It just doesn't make any sense, actually, from like a creator's <laughs> point of view, right? Yeah. To uh, monetize or. Yeah. yeah, like, like the thing is, man. Like, it's. I'll, I'll be honest with you, right? I started to learn how to edit because of yourself and other PK content creators, Chris Archie, Spark Mac, etc. Uh, kids rank Elf Mage and whatnot. And the truth is, it's kind of sad, really, because the creativity, which was editing a PK video back in those days, it's to gone, like a right? really badass song, it's gone. Because if I do that now on my channel get, with over a hundred thousand right. subs. It yeah. will get copyright striked, and I will literally be punished for putting time into a video like that. And it's a shame. It's a real shame because it, it like really, I love yeah. that stuff. It, um, You've got the lightning effect there's a, there's in here. Multiple, like, uh, Tom, there's multiple reasons for that, right? And and people sometimes ask me, hey, uh, why don't you make PK videos like with music the way it used to be? It's a complex issue, right? I mean, one of them is that just like what you mentioned is even if people wanted to make those style of videos, but with the music they want to use, like their favorite Metallica music, for example, you can't do that anymore because not only do you get demonetized, but it has a chance of getting permanently taken down. Yeah, you have a chance to also get a copyright strike, which exactly, and and that's I've, that's I've really had that happen to me once. It was yeah. a close call. Issue. Yeah, <laughs> close yeah. Call, bro. like I, I man, I mean, I made a bunch of videos back around this same time, and obviously, I was nowhere near on the level of quality or success as you saw. I mean, the most viewed video I had back then was like 17k, which was really good for back then. But I mean, yours has like 700,000. Like, that's a big difference. Um, and all of those videos now they're all unlisted because I'm scared because they're on my main channel. I'm scared that I might get a strike or something, which will lead to my channel now in 2020 being taken away from me because I constantly get messages about copyright on those videos and I don't want people to be able to report the videos to like for my channel in case YouTube decide to do like some stupid banning you know yeah, I don't blame YouTube. You. YouTube are known for doing weird things <clears throat> so I just don't want to take the risk I just got hit for demonetization for saying uh, uh I think if you cuss oh, yeah, in the dude. first 30 seconds of your video that's all they do they human review the first 30 seconds and then they'll demonetize you and as soon yeah, as I, I got hit with limited ads video. As soon as I got it's hit, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah I, it was the best video this year, and then all of a sudden, it, it doesn't grow anymore because uh, it doesn't it doesn't get promoted. That's just how YouTube is now. It won't. I don't even care about the money. I just want to get it promoted, but it won't promote videos without ads. So yeah, we'll promote gotta it less. Be, sure. Gotta be very careful nowadays, man. Yeah, yeah, different times, dude. Different times. I mean, honestly, though, like, uh, let's see. Like you said, how Chris Archie kind of and some of the people are like 
you know around his time when because like that's when i got into youtube and i kind of missed yeah. that that like you know stage of music editing because like you know i got i got into youtube runescape when uh, chris archie was like you know booming and like a friend was booming and and like well, my style, that, and, and those were the days bro when yeah. the uh the ads were you got like triple they started coming in they started coming you got in. Amount, uh in terms of monetization back then yeah the ads were just higher valued back then yeah um mm. it was insane like chris archie he <clears throat> And also, there were just far less video makers too. So, oh yeah, that's how much of an impact, like the footprint each uh, video creator had, to the point where if you were well known on, as a creator back then, and you were to go to a world like I say, PK world, and you weren't even live streaming, there was no live stream back then. There would be two hundred people falling in on you huh. to use your food on <laughs> the people. You wouldn't be able to see every everybody. That's how much of an, a footprint each video maker made back then. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. So I got a question for you, Nate. You have made videos for a really long time. You're like one of the OGers. Um, there's a clear gap between content creation here. So your last video up until two months ago was four years ago. So like, what have you been up to? I, I'm taking it. You took like a break from old school and you yeah, just really went and did life. Yeah. <laughs> Cause you're, uh, yeah, you're totally. married, aren't you? I, I've seen that on Twitter. Yeah, Congrats man. by the way. I just, yeah, I just realized yeah, I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's pretty crazy to think about it eh? uh, how just time time just absolutely flies uh, i've played this game on and off uh for almost 19 years now um so during yeah. the four years actually i did come back for a brief uh, amount of time last year just playing briefly i live stream a bit of it but i got into another game called uh, monster legends uh and i made videos on that channel but on a separate channel without advertising it on my RuneScape channel. So I did that, made uh, oh. some videos on that, uh, finished up with that game, and then I got back into uh, RS. But to answer your question during the time that I've been away, uh, just uh, doing what normal people do, working, traveling, uh, you know, PKing. <laughs> hey listen that, that's that's awesome mate because I, I know that you stream now as well and honestly like it, it's I, I feel like there is one thing which is missing from the twitch community in the old school runescape bracket and a lot of that is uh life and people go and travel in and experience stuff so like i'm sure you've got some really cool opinions and views on things that people would like to hear For sure and, it's um, probably quite insightful yeah to, to get into the kind of the headspace of a, of a content creator is it's a really tough gig, you know. I, I when I first did it for the first couple uh, years uh, as a streamer, uh, I remember pulling 15-hour streams for weeks on end. And I mean, from a viewer's perspective, it's kind of expected now, right? But yeah. um, it's really rough, and uh, you know, it did took take a toll uh, to a certain point. So I I needed a break. So that was another reason why I went on a hiatus and it just kind of work on myself, you know. Yeah, that's yeah, that's really mean. that's understandable, man. Yeah. Can we can we talk about the beginning of Twitch and live stream since Racy brought up Bone Cell live streaming and sadly I wasn't there for when Twitch started blowing up on RuneScape. I was on the YouTube side of it, but I heard a lot of awesome stories, especially when you went for uh, your first fire cape in the game, right? Yeah, like, that was a really close. <laughs> and that only happened what like six, seven years ago when RuneScape and uh, Twitch kind of started blowing up. So how how was it back then live streaming when RuneScape was just kind of um, going in? Back then it was uh, Justin TV that they rebranded the name and turned it into Twitch TV. And um, so back then we were trying to bring the community because so so what happened was we brought the uh, community from RuneScape Tippet, which was later named Zybes, to YouTube, and then we then moved the community from YouTube to Twitch. So there are several content creators like uh, Chris Archie, myself, a couple of big uh, content creators, and we what we did is we we advertised uh, the community on Twitch, and it was starting out. So that's kind of how it branched out initially. Uh, Bodhi, he was a uh, he actually started live stream before any of us did. Uh, so he was really the first live streamer for the OS RS category, and uh, together and we worked to, to bring that together. It was it was a very interesting time because there were less restrictions, less rules. And I said this on, on another on a live stream a couple of nights ago. It was basically a nightclub every night because <laughs> there was a point. There was a point people realized, hey, I could drink on stream 
and uh, people love it, right? The support is, is rolling <laughs> in, right? So, oh yeah, there were some gnarly streams, bro, and people were like, Mike, I think you were there for one of the the one time that uh, uh, there was a streamer that uh, undressed herself. Um, sure, remember that one. <laughs> Which I, I, I remember wanna... your comment. I remember your comment. Your your comment word for word was, "That's a clean booty hole." <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah, oh no do you remember that <laughs> oh no <laughs> um let's uh, oh, wait, wait. <laughs> hold up this isn't the <laughs> chick that was like she was doing smithing and somebody was like if you show me your ass i'll give you x amount of dollars well, yes yeah, they, they offered oh. her gold and it made its way around twitch it to her after that so of she did she did it and she didn't end up getting the gold <laughs> Dude, yeah, I, saw that. I saw that. Yeah. I saw that clip like a week ago somewhere. I don't even know where. Oh my it's god! It's still getting it's passed still around. Fun. I feel so. Oh man. oh man, she didn't even get That's the gold, dude. I, right. Does she want some gold? I mean, I feel bad. Let's give her. Let's Patreon it up or something. Man. You gotta find this person. And give her. <laughs> Did she ever finish gold. making her? I don't even want to joke about it. She's probably going through some shit. I feel a little bad. <laughs> do you do you think she was banned? Do you think she was banned off of Runescape or just like... Twitch? I heard that they called her parents oh, and showed the booty hole pics, and that's the worst thing you can do. Could you imagine? Oh, man. Yeah. But you had to go to that length to get banned back then because Twitch was oh, yeah. trying to grow as a platform, right? Because it wasn't even that big as a whole. Uh, not even just RS. Yeah. Yeah, even today you could flash a tit and you'd still be fine. Just when the balls pop out, that's when you go. All right? That's Twitch. Twitch has no ball policy. Everything else is fine. Damn, that's that, that's nuts. Um. So I got a question. This is something I've wondered for ages. Um, there are some people, like when I think of Chris Archie, Spark Mac, yourself, Bowie, all of these people had an audience on YouTube when they made the transfer over to Twitch. And uh, I don't know if you know anything about this. It may be better if we have Faux Paul on himself. But I, I've always wondered because Paul Faux, I'm sure you know who that is. I, I don't think that he started on youtube i think he just started straight on twitch and he was one of the first streamers as well so what was it like a mix between there being youtube content creators on twitch to begin with and then also just random people that just thought they'd give it a go yeah so we started out uh as the youtube creators and then uh it, we kind of uh, fostered a, a community from that and people that that streamed it starting from uh twitch Actually, Reddit was growing around the time that Reddit didn't exist uh, early uh, streaming days, but it yeah. kind of uh, bounced off each other, right? Uh, the yeah, Twitch exactly. kind of grew, the Reddit community kind of grew at the same time. So uh, one of the ways that some of these streamers grew was was through Reddit, getting their content posted. Now I feel that just looking at Reddit now, it's less content uh, creator centric as it used to be, uh, yeah. unless you're, you fall into a couple of uh, streamers categories right a couple of streamers get you know their posts get blown up there but generally speaking it's like a hive mind of people that have like-minded opinions yeah it's usually hostile towards uh, most creators like that that are trying to post their stuff so just wanted to slap this picture on here um first twitch con we got Bo <laughs> and uh and nay and i was taking the pic and i got a picture of everybody picture? yeah that was the cabana uh, um that was a great twitch con i mean seriously dude so yeah, I got some pictures from Vegas too on here. I don't know if you want to. <laughs> like, that was a... that, how many years ago was this? What year was this? Fuck, I don't know. <laughs> it was a does while. It, on, it was. Does um, it not say on the post? I can't see it's bro. How many like, Twitch does, cons does has there December? been? Uh, October twenty third, twenty seventeen. So twenty seventeen. Oh, years ago. That's three years ago. Yeah, that's that's not, not been that long. A lot of growth between all of us, really, in three years. That's kind of insane. And uh, Foe's gotten much buffer too, which is crazy. Uh, but yeah, I got a couple of those pictures uh, from, I don't know, you know, we got Mr. Mammal and, and Framed and all these cool people. And I don't, I don't know what the fuck that is, but uh, <laughs> just, yeah. Was, was, that, was that the first time we met? Or was no, that no, no, dude. Second? Let's go all the way down here. I was going through these. Sorry, I got. <laughs> oh, that was in Vegas, right? Well, we yeah, went to a shishi bar. Uh, I know. Let's say, let me. <laughs> Here we go, dude. <laughs> Paint me like a French girl, huh? Yeah, that uh -huh. was uh, that was Vegas, and there was this um, 
What's that place called, dude? There's this beautiful food place you on guys the just Strip. Woke up. <laughs> is that what it was? Oh, you guys just woke up? Korean barbecue, maybe? Is that what it's oh, called? Oh, Korean barbecue, man. Yeah, that's it. It was something Korean like barbecue. that. I don't know if it was Korean barbecue, but then we got a bunch of these videos. Oh, my God. Look at this. But this was Twitch called years ago. No, that's Vegas. <laughs> we were, oh, Vegas. we, we were I don't even know what this is. I think, um, should that we get, awesome. should we get some huh. Vegas stories, Nate? Oh, dude, uh, could I paint the I background for this, buddy? Cause, yeah. okay, while you pee, I'm going to tell them how everything started. I got you, dude. Right. So, huh. uh, <laughs> I think I just turned 21, right? And, uh, Nate hits me up on. Oh, dude, was it Twitter? I think it was Twitter. He might have my phone number, and he says, "Hey, you want to you want to go to Vegas, dude?" I'm like, "Bro, Vegas, All right? Let me see if I can." Uh, Wait, you know. how do you guys know each other? Sorry, <laughs> if you can backpedal, like, how did you guys oh, even yeah. meet? How did childhood sweethearts? We we've known each other since we were five. Yeah, dude, we grew up <laughs> no. next to each other. Wait, are you kidding? Wait, yeah, I mean, from You're Canada, trolling, dude. right? No, of course not. <laughs> oh, fucking! Hell. I was gonna say, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> No, I, I was watching uh, Nate's stream, and then he watched me when I was doing Iron Man. He's like, you're part of the cool club now. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like what the fuck? <laughs> and so then we just started talking. And uh, When he was streaming? Yeah, I think. Iron Aloha. Pretty yeah, early yeah, days, Aloha, actually. Dude. Yeah, yeah that was when I was watching Twitch. That was before yeah, even our FQs were. Days, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we just So, we just so you just became friends through, through Twitch streams then? That's pretty insane, to be honest. Yeah, that's like me and Cold One, dude. That's yeah. I was super into his Iron Man progress back then as well, so I was watching constantly videos, everything, and uh, yeah, we just started talking, and um, I mean, it's a little blurry how Vegas happened, like, I just knew he was going, and then he invited me, and I said, I'd love to go to Vegas, I just turned 21, and I got a, a bus out there with some cash for, uh, wasn't, we, we didn't really gamble, but you know, I always wanted to try the blackjack table and stuff, and I mean, you know, then you got all these pictures, I mean... It's, uh, I don't know if you, <laughs> you and your wife there, but <laughs> skip that. Here's what, here's the last, last <laughs> night. Um, I think it's what, like, fuck it, 6 a.m. I remember that picture, yeah. And I was just feeling myself, dude. I think I had a Red Bull vodka just to stay awake. Uh, <laughs> I had $20 left those, for my taxi. Just, it's just one of those guys' nights. You guys ever have a, night, those nights with your, your, your buds, like you're having, you're drinking them, and then you just get to that point of the night where you're just having, just some ra talking about some random things, but at the time it makes yeah. a lot of sense, right? Yeah, and it's like the smartest thing you guys have said to each other. It was one of those things. <laughs> uh, the woke like, thing, you know, you say yeah, woke yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah, all, I, I was so bad at taking pictures, but um, oh my god, your your beard in that picture, holy shit, dude, man! I saw a meme of you on Twitter the other day of you looking like the um, what's his fucking name <laughs> off of Aladdin? Oh my god, Yo! Hazar, what's his name? Don't talk no, about my so fan art, yeah. Here, Jafar yeah, Hazar. Have you ever seen Aladdin, buddy? Come on, man. What was his name? The guy with the fucking beard and the parrot. I don't know what his name J is. Jafar, man. Jafar. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, dude, pull it up, man. No, <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> All right, I'll pull it up. But we got it. Do you want to talk about the day one of the um, Vegas trip, dude? Where we did a drinking stream back when you could do drinking streams for money. You can't. Sadly, you can't do it anymore. Oh, wait, that's not a thing now. I'm still getting used to the whole uh, the new Twitch rules. There's too I don't many. Know. Too many, man. Too many. Okay, so is it easier to talk about what you are allowed to do on Twitch? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just don't play on copy. Oh, for fuck's sake, dude. This is some bullshit. It's not even a good picture. Look what at that. that. Yeah, you need a good one without your it, beard. Dude. It'd, be, it'd be better if there was a beard in it. But <laughs> <laughs> this is my fan art, bro. Oh, so beautiful. Yeah, um, beautiful. Nah, you, you just can't get away with a lot. But I just, dude, those Vegas stories, man. So you, you brought your laptop. I think I brought my Blue Yeti. Uh, we had a webcam. We had one of those shitty lamps for lighting. And uh, we just started popping on a stream of Barrows on my account or your account. We were doing Barrows. And it was we were doing $50 a shot, just having the best time of our life. Uh, uh, Nate cut cut me off while we were drinking. Good, right? Because I was just getting into it. He's like, "Yo, you, you've had enough. Let's let's go get some food." So we just wander out. I don't know what time it is in Vegas, and uh, only th only thing we see is a McDonald's. So we're in McDonald's. We're getting our. It smells like throw up in that McDonald's. Uh, and this, and wait, we just, wait, before that, were we trying to go into the liquor store, and it was just super sketchy? Uh, I think that was day two. Day two, okay. It might have been. 
because um, the first night, <laughs> the story that pops out to me was we were getting our McDonald's, we were just sitting there, this homeless guy comes up out of nowhere, and he looks at Bonesaw, and he goes, Korea! <laughs> Bonesaw's just eating his food, like, and he looks at me, he goes, ISIS! And then he just starts to eat oh. next to us. <laughs> we didn't even know him, dude. <laughs> just out of nowhere, we're chilling. Uh, bad for you, man. <laughs> hey, Tom, have you been to America yet? Uh, have I been to America? <laughs> yeah. I have, yeah, yeah. I lived in uh, I lived in Cali for like six months, a few years back. I've okay, so you know what he's talking about, right? In Cali and also in Vegas or New York, there's just those people there. It's like their characters off of uh, GTA. They just come yeah. up to you and they make dialogue. <laughs> you know, Dude, I, GTA characters inspired from those guys. And I, I'll say this: one of the most like eye-opening things that I saw in California, which was like something out of Grand Theft Auto. This is like the only, this is something that I can honestly say this is the only thing you'll ever see in America. You would not see this in the UK. Some dude pulls up at the traffic lights in like a low rider, like convertible, and he's just blaring like Bob Marley, smoking a massive spliff, That's driving insane. along the road. And I just like looked and I was just like, what the fuck, man? Like, <laughs> how is this allowed? How is this even allowed? Bro, man? He's, he's, he's got a uh, resistance, man. He, he probably don't feel it, barely. Oh, probably man. not, no. <laughs> not with that lifestyle. Like, time of his life, man. <laughs> he smokes so much, it doesn't matter anymore. Not with that lifestyle, yeah. dude. Like, that, that trip was uh, pretty wild because we kind of just did it on a whim, right? And yeah. uh, it just, it was definitely memories. Dude. How long did it take you to get there, anyways? How close do you live to that? Uh, I, I live in Vancouver, so it was uh, not a not a very not long a, flight. It's same distance as Cali, so around three hours, four hours. That was like a twelve-hour train ride. That was cheap back then. This oh, was, man. yeah, I barely got partnership. We're talking like no house apartments. You know, I just had to go, had to get a a, a ticket there, and just you know, train yeah, was fine. Was man. Enlightenment, bro, was that the lightning phase? Oh my <laughs> goodness. Dude, you used just... to have this <laughs> <laughs> dude, this is this is our little bar right here. This is what we were drinking. We got the Schmirnoff and stuff, dude. You're balling that night, bro. Dude, for real, man. Um, I just I gotta tell my favorite story in Vegas, and this this kind of correlates to some of these pictures up here. You know, I don't what what the fuck is I don't even know why I posted that. I was just post happy. Um, so I think we all chip in for a table at some bar. Nate apparently had some hookups. Bro. Mate, as soon as you said we all chipped in, I saw the girl on the screen. Oh, no, come on, bro. <laughs> we we like need a little more for that. Uh, I'll explain that picture to you. Um, I think that was our homie right there. <clears throat> I said the um, worst picture. I <laughs> just <laughs> such bad things, bro. It's like a sort of horror movie, dude. Like, I know. you. You. I remember you looking at me saying, stop posting these, though. You know, you got to post the good ones. And I'm like, oops, I just get posted them. Oh, um, good. You're, uh, you're but, too junk to tell. Yeah, and we all we all chipped in for a table, and uh, I've never been to a proper. I don't even know if this is called a club, a night bar, or whatever it was. We had to take an elevator up to it, and then we were released into this place that had like this stage, right, where these women were dancing. They weren't like strippers. There was no stripper poles, but they were like hot Star Wars bikinis with masks, right, just dancing on the stage. It was a classic establishment, okay? Is that what? <laughs> that was. And then we had some tables. Uh, and then this like high top area you could dance, and then in between the tables was a dance floor. It's huge, right? And we were next to like a white sorority house, just women, right? Just all sorority girls, and then millionaires, and whatever. And we <laughs> had the <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we had the we had a uh, I don't know, was it a uh, vodka? It was probably uh, the the high end vodka. I can't think of right now. We were just taking shots, and every time a girl came up, they would want free shots. Right, Nate's like, oh, we're gonna pour you up, dude. So we were just pouring everyone shots because it was we already paid for it. And this was our hostess, right? And I was so gone. I just walk. I'm like, hey, you're you're super pretty. Can I get a pic? All right, because I was just so new to it. She's like, yeah, sure. She was used to it. So that's that picture. But as the night just went on, I mean, (laughs) the quality (laughs) drops. These, um, it's great because I have some I have some stories there. But Nate Nate's in there as well. Um, one of the biggest things was I was just just so gone right i was just chilling on that bar top and this sorority girl starts twerking right <laughs> and this guy's slapping her ass and he seems like a total stranger and i'm like i don't know the bar etiquette i'm just thinking okay he's slapping ass uh <laughs> slap and i'm just sitting there my hands just chilling on her booty she's twerking i don't know what i'm doing i'm drunk and the guy slaps my hand off and says what the fuck bro and i'm, I'm like 
oh, is there like an etiquette for like how long the slap lasts? I don't like you don't know her either. <laughs> you just can't slap, bro. And she didn't even stop twerking. She's still twerking, so I just walk over. <laughs> Wait, this sounds like you went to a strip club about stripping poles, man. No, it's it like, sounds like a these club, did bro. these girls didn't work there. They were club. just they were just women who were dancing, man. Um, and I look behind me, and Nate's gone, dude. This man has bounced because he found these two uh, Australian British women that he was chatting up, right? And he was giving them shots. So he's gone. He's he's with them somewhere. I turn around. I'm lost in Vegas, dude. Right, I don't know where I am. I'm sleeping on the couch tonight, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, um, well, like this, this is where this shit comes in. Like I don't know what I'm doing. Right, I'm just happy. Uh, that should be I think this is a poll, dude. I would. I found my way home. I think uh, two a.m., two to three a.m. I finally hit him. I get woken up at eight a.m. by Bone Saw, who <laughs> apparently is blacked out from the club till then, and he has lost his phone. And his last memory oh, was him man. buying uh, mixers for the girls, and the girls just, like, disappeared. So he's just sitting there with mixers like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> and he just passes the fuck out, man. And I think that's what ended up being, like, we, we need to recoup. Dude. Oh, my God. Just... No, the phone was never reclaimed. No. Oh, Did you ever gone. find that phone? Uh, no, I didn't. No? Yeah. I. I, I've actually forgot about the phone until now. Yeah, we, we tried to find it. We really tried. And you blacked yeah, out, right? Do you remember if you blacked out or not? Because I think you told me, but I don't. It's been a while. Uh, for a part of the night, but I do remember what happened that night. Yeah. Uh, no, nah, I don't think you need to tell us if you don't want to tell us. You know? <laughs> yeah, we have so many other topics, you know, we can hit up. So. Yeah, of course, yeah. man. It's just, I don't know. I saw these pictures. I started reminiscing. Man. But yeah, I was, it was definitely a memorable trip, bro. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Great time, man. Yeah, well, that man, sounds awesome, fun. dude. But it's making me think like I can't wait until everything settles down and we can uh have stuff like that happening again. Oh yeah. Obviously yeah, OSR's Rune Rune podcast oh. hits up Vegas now. <laughs> oh, why not, man? But Nate, have you ever been to RuneFest? And would you ever go? Uh so I was supposed to uh for um in twenty thirteen for the Golden Gnome. But wow. uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to be flown out. Uh, I don't. I don't know what the reason was uh, back then. So I, I did it through my webcam. So they announced like uh, their decisions on, and I had to prepare like a mini video for them back then. Oh damn! Did you actually get the gnome? Uh, I did. Oh, that's I did. good. I don't, I'm not sure how they do the system now. Like, do do they do nominations first, and then they give out? Um, yeah, I think you can I vote on so. it. You can vote on it. I'm now. not entirely sure how it works. I've never really paid that much attention, but uh, there are votes that happen in games. Uh, like you can go to the um, the voting polls in game. I'm pretty sure and vote for your favorite streamer and stuff like that. Yeah, didn't didn't oh, I so based on votes now? Almost get voted I think in one so, time. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was supposed to go to Jagex then, but I actually went to Jagex for a different reason. A uh, a few years later. Oh, that's awesome! Wait, yeah, so what, I, I've been to what Cambridge. What year was that? Uh, off the top of my head, it's either 2014, 2015. Uh, but uh, damn, yeah. So I, I actually went to Cambridge in person, um, went to the airport, and uh, it's almost like in the movies. So you've seen the movies, and there's like a butler or someone like a butler or someone that like, has a really <laughs> posh accent, and they did, and then they yeah. had like a letter, uh, bone saw. Like waiting for me at the airport it was really cool. So they picked me up with the Cambridge. Cambridge is really nice. It was very, uh, very clean. That's what I remember. Very clean. Yeah, it's lovely. Wow. I mean, man, if you want to buy a house in Cambridge, you probably need like two million dollars. So you know, yeah. good luck. Dude, streamer, <laughs> streamer house, man. We can we can pull it together. We'll start yeah, a Patreon. Man. Half a mill for everybody. <laughs> Easy, right? We got this. Oh yeah, maybe in ten years. Yeah, but never been to Jagger or never been to Runefest. I would love to uh, go. Yeah, well, I'm definitely going yeah. next year. That, like we're supposed to, go, I was supposed to go this year, but that that ain't happened. I was supposed to go to TwitchCon this year, man. So sad about that. Why the Rona got to ruin everything, man? Whole year wasted. Oh well. I, I mean, Yo, it's, man, we could look at it as a uh, an opportunity. Actually, I mean, look at all the uh, content creators that have come back. I mean, uh, I'm gonna hint yeah. at someone coming back, but someone else is uh, on his on his way to going back into the stream platform mm -hmm. he was also a streamer early uh, osrs 
Oh. But, I mean, the way I, the way I look at it is, is um, is that uh, when he Godspell PK'd in the beginning of RuneScape? Are we talking about the same guy or no? So wrecked. Yes, so wrecked. we are. Okay, no, I was. I, was the same vibe, I thought bro. we were keeping it hidden, bro. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to give out code words here. That's cool. He's making a comeback. He he started That's the cool. petition, petition right to make old school yeah. comebacks. So he he was the one who galvanized the uh, yeah. uh, content creator, YouTube content video. creators, and uh, without that petition. Uh, this game might not, not actually exist. This version of the game, yeah, so we might have the original so RS too. Yeah, dude, I was following that as it was happening. Like I signed it and everything, and I was ready for day one. <coughs> I, was, I was into it, dude. Tom, you said uh, you've been to Jackx headquarters and you you have complete trust with the the mods, right? I'm really curious yeah. what kind of things the you know like the transition that led you to that point. So, right, I I think the longer I've played the I played the game a long time. I think there's just been a, a shift in the way that Jagex have dealt with the community as a whole. Like back in the day, I'm sure you know, like it was almost impossible to contact a JMod. Like talking to a JMod just was not a thing. Like you couldn't talk to a JMod. Like how did you get in contact with them? Um, as time's passed, uh, I feel like a lot of the JMods, you know, they're all on Twitter, for example. Um, yeah. I, I think that for me personally, it was just a case of like, watching the updates that they put into the game and how they actually gave some of the control and power back to the players, which I think that at the time was definitely necessary uh, because there was literally little to no trust. I, I, yeah. I think that now that there is trust and we can see that they've made some really good decisions and updates, I think that you know maybe we should let them have a bit more power than what they have because things just aren't passing for PvP. Yeah, I'm not going to PvP. It's funny because it, it's doubled down now, you know? Yeah, like it's come full circle. Because before I think, there wasn't enough trust, but now there's too much. Yeah, uh, I, I think too much uh, relying on the players to do the feedback stuff now. It's and the like, players have got. I mean, dumber. I, I, oh my god, it's so hard. It's like a you know the, the what is a seesaw <clears throat> thing. It's just it's yeah. so hard to balance it oh, out now. Many um, discussions on people's uh, Twitch about that, eh? About PKing updates, uh, how you guys feel about that. I'm sure you guys have thought in your. We talk, talk about, about it all the time, but uh, well, to add on to what I was saying, like. I've also been lucky enough to meet them multiple times now. Oops, yeah. And um, I don't know, I would say I'm a pretty good judge of character for the most part. And when I meet people that work for the game and they speak to me with so much passion and love and concern for the game, like I, I'm not going to name any names. And in fact, I'm sure they wouldn't mind. I won't name the names, but these are J mods, which, for example, don't actually work there anymore, who literally told me when they were J mods if. Jagex, like literally worded it as if Jagex was a different thing to the actual J mods. And they said if J if Jagex ever decide to pull a squeal of fortune or a Runescape uh, a Runescape free kind of deal, we're gone. I like these it. are no, the people I who I, I, I gain full trust from the J mods just being around yeah, them, definitely... seeing how they speak and how much they love the game. All like, our really all as content eyes. creators should make a pack too. Squeal of fortune, we all leave. Roblox, Minecraft, we do something else. Yeah, like, we need to make the a thing, fucking The thing pack. is, is that you know, back then it was, um, you know, we had no, we had no uh, way to talk to JMods, and at the same time, we also had really no idea what like the corporate side of things were like either, right? Like, I'm sure a lot of it probably came down <clears throat> to the corporate side of things, where like finances or or like something they're they have to always meet, you know, like how much money they got to earn, whatever, and like you know all the shareholders and stuff. I'm sure a lot of those guys behind the scenes we're putting some pressure into the game because i don't think elc just happens overnight right there's probably some there were some big plans oh uh, yeah well know, it was turning scenes, into a mobile uh, game before mobile games even existed yeah. you know what i mean yeah because like a lot of those you know we don't know about the other side of the company because it's not the j mods that yeah, necessarily that's the, run the yeah. game right it's, it's they're not the, the ones well, pulling the strings yeah that's exactly. how i see it but like i don't yeah. know man I think that just over time, like trust is earned. It's not just given, yeah. right? And, and, and I feel bad for the J mods because a lot of the blame is put on them, even though yeah. they're the ones that's making the game. They're just making the content and stuff. And like <clears> the people that are planning the game, they're way up, they're way higher up there, and you don't know them. You we don't see them. Like yeah. you know, like the head of the uh, you know Jagex, right? And they're, and like that's probably like the bridge between. J mods and the actual corporate people like we don't even talk to that guy like ever we should hit him like, up so, so so we barely uh, understand truly what that's you know behind the scenes we only know the people yeah we only know people that make the game which is not fair because these guys don't make the decision of like destroying the game or improving the game right like it's you can't 
really blame those guys. Yeah. yeah specifically, uh, while we're on the the note of updates and also PKing, right? I'm sure this has been beaten. This dog has been beaten to death. The number. Oh of yeah. Times, right? But <laughs> yeah. my perspective on how to improve PKing is quite simply find a way to get casuals into the wilderness. Because if you look back at the yeah, 2005, 2004, yeah. the reason why the wilderness was so fun was because there were just way more news. It concurrently is also, also because there was lack of social media. So if you look at Twitch, or for example, at any given time, you're going to be able to observe yep. a pro PK or PK for hours on end, and you could quite uh, quickly yeah. pick up like, their tendencies and stuff like yeah, that. That's also, the dynamic nowadays. Way. But back information then, exchange is not yeah, right now. Back then there was no such information. So if there's a way for Jagex to find a way to just bring more um, casuals in with su not such a high skill gap, then you gotta balance the wilderness. But I think that's what they were going with when they added the enclave. Have you been to the new PvP hub? I know it's super new. Um I saw your stream for eight hours. <laughs> hey, there you go. You saw it there. <laughs> and um they pretty much put in LMS and some other mini games. And they tried to bring people in the wild. They even changed Clan Wars teleport to the Enclave teleport. So you're in the wild, just not in a dangerous area. And three days later, it turned into the <clears> new <throat> rune crafting method. It's filled with rune crafters. Uh, it's it's really not that active. There's some changes here. I think they're going to add a new skull, I, but dude, yeah. I we we talk about PvP a lot, oh, and okay. um, like. Right, I think this is a fundamentally this is a big issue when it comes to PvP. Okay, since the game's beginning, right, Nate, you've played all the way since RuneScape Classic, man. Like, aside from RuneScape Classic, like when you got RuneScape Two, not a lot of stuff has changed. If you look at old school RuneScape, there have been so few updates made; it's ridiculous, in especially regards. when. In regards to PK, mm -hmm. and if yeah. you compare that on the other hand to say PVM. For example, oh my god, the, the Iron Man, mm. yeah, the Iron Man game modes, uh, even skilling, for example, all of the things that have been added for that, PvP has been hugely neglected. Now you're from an era, same as me, back when PvP was it ran the whole game. If you didn't PvP, you didn't play, or like you were doing something for PKers, fishing sharks, making brews, whatever it was, or for the whole goal of PKN. Well, times have changed. Like, things aren't like that now. The majority of people do PVM, and there's a good reason for it. It's because they've put so many resources into PVM. They've actually made it incredibly good. It's very progressive. You get a genuine sense of progression as you go through these monsters and this PVM challenges. And, like, the monsters, like, I I've seen on your streams, I've lurked a little bit. You've been killing, like, Vorka, for example. Wait until you get to, like, the Gauntlet. And you see the mechanics on that boss, for example. Oh, yeah. It's like they have done magnificent things for PVM. And reality is, like, why would you want to go and PK? The people that PK no are, money. Ha have been PKing for 10 years Bro. plus. They're, uh -huh. they're at the top of their game. You can't compete. And it's the same as it was 20 years ago. Tom, you know? I, I completely agree. And uh, I've been getting a fair... Because I just recently got back into streaming, so... Take what I say with a grain of salt, but uh, ever since I came back, it's 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 interesting because the the most uh, frequently asked question is, "Hey, when are you going to PK?" Uh, I actually haven't PK'd uh, much, even early OSRS. I did PK a, a bit, but yeah, you did a lot of skill to kill videos. Um, <laughs> in regard yeah. to the whole question of PKing updates, it's it's interesting to me because while there isn't a lot of PK updates, if you look at some of the top uh, content creators. Like in terms of Torvesta or Oda Block, right? There's a yeah. huge demand for that. People want to see that. People want to watch people PK. Mm -hmm. So that would be a good direction in terms of just the game as a whole, right? For Jagex to grow, uh, is if they found a way to cultivate that. Yeah, I mean, um, I agree, dude. We we we've came to like kind of a conclusion on this podcast is like a general a general feel for what could be something for PvP. And that would be some sort of rank system. And like I'm sure you've played like League of Legends in your time. You've been playing games for 20 years plus. You played League? Uh I watch people play League. Okay. I've well you, have you played like stuff like CSGO, you know, for example. Yes, like, yes, yes, CSGO. Any any yeah. game of a rank system. Basically, like 
if you can be paired up against somebody who is at a similar skill bracket to you and the rank system basically works as like if you kick ass you get pushed up and you're gonna fight against people at the same rank as you um we we feel like a rank system could be a step towards making pvp better and more active because then it would give people who are new and amateurs a way of actually fighting other new players exactly. like at the moment yeah, yeah, exactly yeah 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 yeah, you, yeah. 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 You're same mindset then because that, that's like, the problem is it, the, the skill gap is too big because even even for, yeah. for for me i've had pk experience it's yeah it's the daunting right and this uh the way i'm going to progress is i'm going to learn edge drill pk you know the 2020 way right mm, um, yeah apparently now you can get hit 115 in one oh yeah, if you, you get higher you do, than that it's think, ridiculous <laughs> probably, dude, what, yeah. like, what have you seen <laughs> have you seen the stag panic did so he uses a d spear he knocks him back he chucks a dragon throwing axe, hits the G-Maul, so he uses all the spec bar, hits two G-Maul hits, throwing axe, and then he's low HP with DH. I've seen, like, almost 200 damage. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of crazy stacks. <laughs> and there. you can't do anything because like, you're speared. But by the time the stun ends, you could yeah. be stacked for twice, three times the HP you had. And you could do it in different, uh, like, mage range or... or yeah, um, some people, like... Oh, yeah. Have you seen the volatile day? staff yet? Yeah, it's the, yeah. it's the Karasi. It's the Karasi uh, take uh, old school now. It's it's yeah, a mage okay, bit. But it's, no, yeah. it's really yeah, inaccurate. Yeah, but. At the time, it really well. Like, but that's where the skills involved because you know you can't just do it on a whim. I'm trying you know, to get Nate deep right. wild, dude. I'm told, hey, Sunday, me, you, some drinks. Yeah. we'll go deep wild PK. I show him the way. Yeah, we're going deep. I'm but trying like, to get him in, man. Know, I've thought a lot about the PVP stuff, even though I, you know I don't P PVP. But like I've, I think I've come to realize, you know, back in the day, like Rixi said, it was very PVP centric. Things revolved around it, but nowadays it revolves around mostly PVM and skilling. Oh yeah. But um, you know, another side to think about it, uh, from from this is, is that um nowadays we're older, right? So most of us are just trying to kind of live a second life in this game, and like the whole PK stuff and and all that. That's been adequately satisfied in other games, because like other games Easily. are doing it better now. That's oh yeah, why. and that's what it is. So like all of us older players who are just trying to chill and have a you know good time and kind of live a second life type of deal. We we play this game, and all the people, the younger kids or whatever, or the people that are like really competitive, you know, nowadays there's so many <clears> options, <throat> and it's and it and, and not only are the options really good, they're stellar because they're all competitive. And they're free. They all have competitions. No money. So like it's super legit because it's like. Dude, if I play this game with this rank system and I actually make it up there in the ranks, I can compete in the competition and win like a million dollars. You know what I mean? Like, how crazy is that, bro? You know, now nowadays we have P PKing, but you just kill some guy and you might get loot that you can make in yeah. 20 minutes of Zora. What was you the know, latest like, prize pool for the, the Demo same. tournament, Rice? What was it like $1,000? $1,000 for a month on <laughs> tourney, bro. <laughs> Come on, yeah. man. I mean, one thing so I, 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 I don't know how you guys feel about this, but for me, if future Dead Memo uh, season come up, I'm going to take a break from the next couple. Just because from my own experience, uh, Dead Memo is just one of those things that you, you invest a lot of time into. Yeah. Right. But the top team is going to always win. No. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. Why, why bother? One time they won oh, yeah. so hard <laughs> and, uh, and they cheated. Jagex found they cheated. They gave the money to charity. Right, which is just yeah, fucking. I, I was so happy. Right? Did they catch them DDoSing? They something? caught them doing everything. They were fucking, you know, botting yeah. their stats up. They were doxing yeah. other people. They were hitting offline. Dude, even Mika's whole community college got hit offline because he was a contender. You know what I mean? The, yeah. the four that people left. Two of them got doxed at the. It was gonna be a one v one v one v one. That was a mess, dude. That one them and ridiculous, a man. Oh, really? The last one was pretty clean though. I, I was actually a part of it. I just missed the yeah. Ones, but like, yeah, it was mostly very clan dominant. If you weren't in a clan. And you're pretty much like you, you ain't oh there's it. no <laughs> the only time you we've ever seen someone win without a clan was wooks and in the first dead man tournament when the guy was just yeah. running around that's it and, and, and he just you know basically take a the fog <laughs> and they like and they like barely won you know um yeah. nate have you heard of uh twisted league right i'm i'm guessing you might have I've heard of it yeah dude you i want to see house? you play the next league oh you would love twisted oh my god hey, i would watch i would be playing it i got boys. ranked 49 last league i'd love to see you play that it, if yeah. I can go back to the um the question or the subject Nate was just on about with Dead Man Mode. The All right, interesting but we're back to thing, though. All right. Just I really want to hear his perspective. My bad though. Go for it. Okay. The interesting thing about DMM is uh, a lot of the returning players, like dude, Rice Cup, 
Bryce Gupp in a peak hair, man. This man, like, recently only just wielded his first AGS. No offense, Rhea. And I that thing is gone. But he <laughs> played, he played Dead Man Mode. A lot of people played Dead Man Mode not exactly for, it's nothing to do with the PKing. It's to do with the progression. It's, it's That's really what strange. people like. People have been, like, it, like the, the game meta has shifted from it being mm -hmm. about PKing to a progression mode. And there is actually yeah. something which is fun about progressing an account 15 times faster so than what it is in the normal like, game. I love it. Sure. Yeah. And, and Tom, uh, like you said, right? Not everyone goes on in PK. So, I mean, I, I'm guilty of this, right? In my, in my first dead man, all I did was do a herb lore. But I mean, you, you, love love it. you know what I mean? Like it was, yeah, it was a good time, and I didn't even PK in that first uh, season. So people do it for different reasons. So yeah, yeah, dude. I mean, seriously, leaves. Nay, I'm sorry. Are you still going, Rexy, on that? No, no, no. no. Yeah, I, I, I was, I was just. All I'm gonna say. The last thing I saw on PK and is I've PK'd for. I've PK'd for more of this game than PVM or anything else. Like all I've ever done is PK, and I was a Mage Bank PK, or hybrid in back EOC, and there are only so many people. That you can kill hundreds of people you can kill and take their loot and still get a satisfaction at the end of the day like for me it burnt out and died a long time ago and i realized that pvm was the thing in old school that was getting love and attention and i jumped ships um but i, I think that for me as i have a definite bias as somebody who's played in pk to have a lot and i'm tired of it um and going back to the rank system I think that if they could nail some kind of, whether it be cosmetic or some kind of reward or something like that, I, I think... They need that, bro. They need that. I, I think that it would actually appeal to quite a lot of people to see, like, who's the best? Who can compete? Who can be in the highest bracket of hybrids in the game? That, to me, would appeal. But just taking somebody's loot after killing them and getting nothing else, I'm kind of done with it. And I'm not asking for emblem drops and like PvP do weapons and yeah. stuff like that on, to on top of the loot. I I'm just saying I want a little bit more, even if it's something which is like, it's almost like air. It's like a rank. It yeah. barely exists. Well, little like, keychain, dude. Like little keychain. Yeah, yeah, uh, well, in, in terms of like little burnout with the PKing thing, because I played this game in total like 19, 19 years, right? And majority yeah. of the time I, I, I've played this game, actually, I've been a PKer. And it's yeah. just one of those things where we, I don't know if it's age or just I've done it too much, but there's only so many times you could actually kill someone for the same loot and the same people over and over again. We're adding that extra reward system in for, for boosting ranks. I mean, why do people play Overwatch, right? Competitively. Yeah, you exactly. Know, no, that's the thing. It's the competitive. You can't even loot off that. You don't need loot. Exactly. Because it's like the prestige. You, build you need the achievement. Of a rank, you know? Mm -hmm. You legitimize I the rank. Yeah. Through competitive dude like competitions and boom, you get before started. before we get onto twisted leagues, I will say this: if you haven't done any PvP since you've been back, I highly highly encourage you, Nate, to oh, go yeah. and check out Last Man Standing oh, yeah. because it is probably the best PvP update in my opinion that we've ever fucking had. No, it's wow. actually it's actually very fun, I and tried they've done it, it very well. Fun. Yeah, it, it's Ray, like Ray, the, he loves it. I, I think it, uh, blighted good. pouches are better. Is it like back in three years where there was like a dueling system where you could like duel people, but like you got paid like a fat reward at the end of it? Is like a no, no. It's, I know, I know what you mean, but it's not. It's it's effectively like a battle royale. It, the more people you kill, the better you are. The more you're rewarded through loot, so you get stronger as you kill people. And then at the end, it should be you if you're the last person standing with someone else, and you're both really well geared. And you fight each other, and obviously the winner gets the most points. And it's, it, it's, it's very private bait, uh, heavy, so because yeah, you get all kinds it's of hybrid. Hybrid set up. Yeah, it's all right. It, it's 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 good. It's I mean, there's an element of RNG you can get tilted short. I did it earlier today and got tilted. Oh but like, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> in terms of PvP, it is actually really active. A game that people clearly like. Um, and like they they could so easily do things for that mini game and build on top of what we have because at the moment we have like the most beta building block of a PvP mini game. If they gave it a little bit of love and attention, maybe made a couple other maps which they are working on, and just gave it some like little touches, man, I'm sure it could be a lot better. And it definitely has potential for yeah, sure. They, they could okay. eventually, if they flush out the last man setting a bit better, they can do definitely have some sort of battle royale uh, ranking, but. I think the core ranking they would need is obviously 1v1ing, right? I would hate to do like high ranked LMS just because of how try hard people would be like constantly behind trees, under you. But, but that's, yeah. It would be yeah. insanely I mean, I think boring. A okay. So, a specific question Does everyone NHPK now? Like no honor PK? Like with overheads? Well, is it? If yeah, I, yeah, like that's just a thing. That's just is the really? wilderness now. I think no, back no, then when PKing was newer, like prayer off fights. 
Yeah. Uh, if you go to like Bounty Hunter, Bounty Hunter or yeah. PvP worlds, but Bounty Hunter is just like a fucking boosting system. People just boost <laughs> for uh, right a no no exaggeration. Like people just go there to boost. Seen, PvP yeah, worlds, you could have a proper fight with somebody with no overheads. Yeah. Yeah, but hy hy hybriding with uh with no overheads is pretty much a thing of the past unless you're fighting somebody who is rushing you and they're just gonna spec and telly well there's do, no there's no honor man they do it's, armor it's takeoffs insane. in edgeville pvp worlds but um i i would just have to say back in the day when no honor was a thing i think just a lot of people didn't know how to prayer switch properly f key wise all this stuff was new so to encourage other people not to have prayer on, they, they created the no honor system. Because usually over time, PvP always gets more complex. So how does PKing and RuneScape get more complex? You, you add prayers. It adds a whole different dimension. You have to really get off prayer. Um, yeah. So I, that's just kind of how it progresses, man. 2020 PKing yeah. is just all NHing. Uh, my, yeah. There is no there is no, no denying, though, that having to use your overhead praise while trying to kill somebody at the same time does require more skill than not having to worry about it. Oh, for sure. so, Fundament, yeah. Fundamentals of LMS, actually, right? Because well, you know, unlimited yeah. prayer. So. I, okay, talking, this relates back with clans as well, but actually back in uh, 2005 era, like our early RS2, our, RS2 actually came out in 2004, but shortly after that, the whole game was run by clans. But what I mean yeah. by that is every, most people that played the game, right, there was no inter way to interact, but clans. So everyone kind of sorted themselves out. There was like Wilderness Guardians, DID, uh, RS, and that was back clans. when they had respect, huh? That was back when they helped and, the game, right? Pure clans created this rule where you cannot teleport out because naturally, I mean, the specs weren't too high, right? So we yeah. we, we kind of made our own rules when it comes to uh, Wilderness PKing. And if you were to teleport out mid fight, it was considered uh, no honor. Yeah. So there was. No, so the two different type of clans, right? There was the honor clans, like wilderness guardians, and there were no honor clans, right? Like ROT was was one of them, right? Yeah, and but they it's, really it's, took it too far. <laughs> it, it's interesting because because now the way it's divided it almost is into Twitch chats. The community has kind of sorted itself through streaming communities and yeah. YouTube platforms, eh? Yeah, pretty much. And yeah. What you notice is you don't you don't see people talk in game a lot. Whereas before it was all people were just it's their own yeah. little community. I think it's there's more forms of ways to talk to people, so it's more split up, I guess. Like yeah. Discord and uh, yeah, there's so many ways now. Yeah, yeah, you're because, right. Yeah, I barely I look at my in-game chat. Yeah, I, I remember look. I used to PM all the time, but nowadays if someone PMs me, I won't catch it like half the time. But even clan chat, even clan chat, I feel yeah. like is more empty. But that probably has to do with raids, right? Yeah, like, the, yes. I, like I, I run my own clan chat, for example, and it's a really good way to build community because like a lot of people, you know, they they like to share, you know, like their achievements or whatever, or just talk to pass the time. And like a clan chat is a great way to do that, but it's kind of like another Twitch chat in a way, you know, it's just yeah, another way to consolidate. It's a good way to get with your community, pretty much. Yeah, where it's just everyone's friends, pretty much. But um, yeah, now it's time to talk about league. All right. So, <laughs> Nate, how how much do you know about League? I'm not a skiller, but I love this shit, man. How much do you know about League so I can know uh, what to play in here? I, just, I probably had five comments in my streams. So, Leagues, the, la the first and last League we've had, Twisted League, right? And in general, it's just Leagues, but Twisted because it was in uh, uh, Zaya. It Zaya. Yes, Zaya. And you can get the Twisted Bow. And you get points, and the points add up to a total score. And the more points you get, the more tiers you unlock. So say you can unlock a perk, you, you chop a tree, you get three wood. Or you can fish, and you get three fish, right? You could choose your classes. You could get more Slayer experience. You could get unlimited ammo. Uh, classes? Can you... What do you mean? Like, okay. <laughs> like, it was abilities, right? So, like, um, there was different tiers of abilities that would impact, like, PVMing or skilling. And, like, if you did enough tasks, which gave you enough points to reach that tier, let's say tier two was, like, I don't know, 5,000 points. But if you reach 5,000 points, you reach the new tier of abilities, and then you can pick uh, one of them. For, so you for can like, get a you know, build for skilling and PVM. One was, like, yeah. uh, you could pick your Slayer task, right? Yeah, so you I could imagine build. Yeah, I had a PVM if you just catch a bunch build. of chins. Yeah, what's the ultimate goal with Twisted League? Um, you Get compete, points, you, you compete yeah. in rank, you can compete in, uh, you know, skills. So say if you're just like trying to go for rank one slayer or you can compete overall. Um, I was yeah. rank 49 overall in twisted league, just point wise. 
Uh, and they just give really cool bonuses, right? You know, if you get a you twisted boat, you get points. Stuff, okay. If you get a yeah. skilling pit, you get points. If you get a clue item, you get points. And it was a beautiful game mode. It lasted two months, way too long. But they're adding... It should have been, um, it should have been about one. Oh, probably. seriously. So what do you get like as a reward outside of... Uh, Trophies. The- and like, stuff. Um, you and there's like get, an outfit. You get, co- you get cosmetics for the in- real game, and you get a trophy. It's pretty much just right. content for Twitch streamers. I still haven't even collected my stuff, but yeah, you stuff, could yeah. you could sell yeah, you this stuff. Like, Yo, money. dude, the, those twisted right. horns, mate, are like twenty plus mil right now. By the way, you might want to cash them in, mate. I'm before saying, the next one comes know. out. Well, the UK well, no, it carries if they're on. If out another one, you're gonna lose out on money, man. You should buy them seriously. Yeah. I, I, but, I don't uh, know. Anyways, yeah, no, you're right. But, but... The thing is, that's <laughs> specifically to for one league. The rules could be completely different in the next league. So basically, like, forget about everything you know about the game and like stand, ma- uh, like metas and stuff, because like the next one's gonna be like they could change the entire rules behind it. I mm-hmm. think they're so, gonna go with the like, basis of unlocking towns league next league. Like if you, you can start a Lumbridge or something, then you can unlock the next yeah. town. You that sounds like town. excellent uh content to be honest. Oh, it's very I would l- I would love to see I've you never, play it. I've never like played the game, for example, stuck in that one specific place. Like how long did it run the league? It was two months, but I think I they hope might it's do one month. I hope it's yeah, one month this yeah, time. They said they're already working on the new one. Obviously they didn't say what it will be, but I'm feel assuming free, it's going to be like one month this time. Feel free to check out my old videos too. I have a whole series on it if you ever want to like know what it is about yeah. because it's yeah, pretty much a dead man with like, perks. So if yeah. you like the skilling part of dead man mode, you're going to you're going to love this. You really Yeah, I did a lot I, but, <laughs> By the way, Nate, I'm the only person here that refused to play it cuz I'm not I told him to play it. I told him to go for all the clue scroll items. It would have been a sick series. He like regretted it's it a little weeks. bit. There are some interesting perks where like you could uh, you could get clues at like one fifth, like one in five only, so you can just spam clues like crazy. And then you could so stack the like clues too. Hard clues in a day or Wait, something. So to clarify, okay, sorry if I sound like a newbie right now, but we're talking a lot. You go into the Twisted League. It uh, is separate the game mode. Yeah, separate, separate server. Separate. Uh, server. Is it the, you can't sneak items out or anything. No, no, no. And this, you buy- when you talk about when you when you were like one in five clues, I was like, you get one in five clues like in the actual game, like holy. Nope. Shit. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was that was one of the abilities, like in the in that game game mode. So there's but yeah, um, that's what they'll do next time. Have you guys talked be- a lot about Group Iron Man on uh, your podcast? Well, we kind of oh. did, but oh yeah, I mean we could talk about it. Like for example, it was uh, an old gazette. It, it's already confirmed Group Iron Man isn't happening this year because of Rona. It'll be good, good. middle of next year, pretty much. So is there any questions or something? I, I just uh. Because I I've recently found out about it and it's pretty fascinating, you know. Yeah. And one of the things that I actually talked about recently in one of my streams with my chat is uh, just a little concerned with how they're going to implement it because there yeah. can be a lot of problems with it. Because yeah, just like the whole concept of it is you're 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 grouping up. It's kind of ironic, right? A lot of questions, right? Like, Shouldn't is it all getting allowed? Like you gotta have to try and break it. Like I hope they try and really break it before they release it, right? For example, right? Is it going to be the meta where one person multi logs on two other accounts? Like is I that? Gonna okay? I think that's gonna be allowed, but I don't think it'll be the meta because I think three efficient players is definitely way better than one guy playing two accounts. So like <laughs> let's say let's say you're like in will, a high though. HP clan, like you know the skilling clan and stuff. I'm sure you could probably get two other guys that sweat sixteen hour days with you but like um obviously the more casual people they're not gonna have people that that can you know like there's always gonna be that one guy that's like i'm sorry guys i changed my mind i gotta quit well, but I'm like sure for, there's gonna be a lot of account <laughs> sharing too you know like because you know like if one person goes i mean people have lives right like you can't yeah. sometimes they're gonna have yeah. issues they can't play that person gets voted out. Well, what's let's say, what if it was without their consent? Yeah, that'd be kind of mm. unfortunate. That, but um, yeah, that would yeah, suck. People would complain. But I think that would be on the players. Like group bank and yeah. locked out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it will happen. Yeah. It will. Mm. That, it will definitely. The questions they should be asking when they're making it. Right. I so think- I I remember hearing something that if you get kicked from your clan, you're able to then team up with other people. Yeah, I remember they, hearing this. What? With, uh, no, but they can add another person to your group if they re- if they kick someone out. The the person that gets added to the group they have to start as level three. But they can yeah. share the items though. 
They can share the items that they already have. But the guy that joins in, he, it has to be a new account. That's Dude, level three. so weird. So oh, you can't be like, okay. yo, uh, this level 80 guy, uh, I want you in. No, it has to be a new account completely. That's the fair way. But like, what, what about the person that gets kicked out, Ray? The guy that gets kicked from oh, the group. True. Oh, he That's dies in real life. Oh, yeah. they, they, they can't actually join another team. They're just done no, then. No, they're just okay. done. But I think that's more so that the challenges of the group Iron Man, right? Is that right. if you are going to get a team going... you got, you got to you keep your friends together. Yeah, you, you should be responsible <laughs> for... Your survivor, bro. Yeah, I mean, like, obviously, <laughs> if you know you're, the guy that you're going to add flakes a lot, I mean, if you really care about longevity team-wise, you're not going to add that guy, you know? Right? But, like, there's going to be a lot of trust. There's going to be just a lot of drama. I think that's probably going to be the, the flair, the element. Of group Iron um, Man that makes it interesting to watch because then people are like, oh, yo, your your friend, dude, you know, I heard he uh, has shit going on and he quit, you know, like all that drama is gonna be like, I think the, the part of the content, I guess. I think it's gonna be an unlimited amount of content. Like you've just given me an idea, Nate. I'm tempted just to make free accounts and be yeah. like, man, I'm gonna set them up at Court Beast as soon as I get in Zami Spears, get oh, like a spirit yeah. shield, like all of that, like. Go to the DK's really low level, have one mage pure, one melee pure, one range pure, just slay the DK's. Yeah, like, yeah no, you know that Michaels guy? YouTube, yeah. He's going to do that for sure. He makes like 10 accounts a month or some bullshit. So he's yeah. definitely going to do that. That guy's... There, there's Good luck someone, competing someone, with him. Someone on uh, Twitch the other day, I swear they were streaming 25 different accounts at once. What, like, some people do that stuff. I, I don't know what they were what doing. Like, I saw a picture. Hmm. I can't remember, man. But people, people just play in weird yeah, ways, man. Ulting. Like <laughs> ulting in this game is uh, well, like that's a huge thing. You know, I don't know if you're interested in that, but ulting in this game has become so insane, like absolutely insane. I don't know if you're interested in stuff like that, like the the whole community thing, because like I know you you wanted to talk about comparing like community culture from back then versus now. Like it's so different nowadays. You want? I don't know if you. Want yeah, to it's, it's uh, from my perspective. Yeah. Away and then just kind of see the juxtaposition before between then and now. Yeah. Everything on steroids, PKing, PVMing, stealing, yeah, dreaming, YouTube, YouTube, like the content, guys, is insane. You guys are so competitive, you dude. Put out some amazing content. I've been trying to catch up with all the videos lately. There's so much out there. You could find a guide for anything yeah. and everything nowadays. Yep. Yep, crazy. There's new ones every week too. Money makers, yeah, all yeah, this dude. stuff. You can talk There's all anything about. that people have questions about, there will be an answer to it. Yep. Yeah, it's funny because I feel like there's a few different kind of content creators in the community now because there are definitely yeah. two kinds, at least two kinds that I know of, which are content creators who provide guides, and then content creators who provide personality. And like people watch for who they are. Did you just shit on all guide. the guide channels right now? <laughs> oh no, no, because there's, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Like, but you know, people who make guides like, and people have personalities, bro. I'm just kidding. Like I'm just kidding. But I, just I, I, I didn't mean it like that. But I mean, like, <laughs> take Theo Atrix as an example. <laughs> he's never made a. I don't think he's ever made a personal video. Every video has been a guide. So it's yeah, like his channel is a guide channel. You know. And he has he's a lot of personality. personality. He has yeah, a website yeah. uh, under it. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. got apps, man. That indexes his videos too. Is 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 it's smart the way he does it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He knows. He he knows the game, bro. bro. But so you have like personality content creators, and then you get people that are like T. I I would say, I, if I can be so humble, I would say that I'm like a mixture of both because I I take people and I'm like. I'm going to show you guys how to make some money while at the same time, like putting yeah. my personality into my videos. Yeah, I'm more I was watching your uh, Pokemon stream, you know, the uh, the cards you're talking about. Uh, your cards. Yeah, yeah. Oh, re re when was that? Today or just like the other day? day? Yeah, just, just today because, uh, yeah, I was looking at your videos and I was like, oh, you're streaming. So I, I tuned in for a bit. I was lurking. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, uh, I love, I love, dude. I got something. This is uh, a, ja this is the Japanese, this is the newest box they've made. It's called Digimon? Heartbeat. <laughs> is that no, wait, no. That's Pokemon? Dude, this is Pokemon. This is Pokemon. That's Pokemon. This is the uh the Japanese. Nate, what have you started, dude? He's gonna be bro, twenty so minutes I, in I, talking I, about I, cards, I'll just, bro. I'll just show you real quick, man. Okay. <laughs> so in every one of these boxes, you get twenty packets. These are Japanese only. And in one box, you are guaranteed to get a card called an amazing rare. This is the amazing rare Rayquaza that I pulled from this box. Looks and like it is good. absolutely like they have never made anything like this before. It looks like the it's Geico lizard on acid. Fantastic. Put that in a vault for 20 years. 
Yeah. Well, the thing is, I've got eight boxes coming, and I'm just going to stick them away, and then in 20 years, sell them for like 10 grand each. <laughs> that's, the, that's the dream. We'll see. Yeah, yeah I, love, I love Pokemon, man. I the actually... RuneScape equivalent is like uh, Zora tablets. I cannot believe Zora tablets. <laughs> oh, yeah. Price. I had like a thousand of those back back uh, when it first came out. What was the price difference there? They went from what, four or like five hundred each? We do. I think I saw like they used to spam them out when they were first uh, dropping. Yeah. Yeah, they used to drop multiple, huh? It used to drop 50 at a time. 50. I think the, um, one of my buddies did math on it. The, the, the amount that it went up was more than Bitcoin. Like if you were to compare uh, the numbers. Yeah, I used to sell for 50 and they, they uh, I think they're like 20K or something now. Or something. Yeah, I think I made a cool 100 couple mil oh, in like, like an hour I'm when trying, that I hit. I had a Pokemon card. Come That's, my friend made like a bill. Know, I'll see if I can find it somewhere on my desk. Oh no, what are you doing? You, you have like a like vintage, like uh, first edition ones? Oh, dude, don't even, okay. Even oh, fast, boys, so I it's over, one, stream's over. It's second. over, boys. What have this you done? He'll be on this topic for like 30 minutes. Guys, I, I was not aware of. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Yeah, this man yeah, loves his cards, bro. If if he starts getting to how people rate cards, just like turn your webcam off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now you have seen how you asked so nicely. Fuck. I shall oblige you. One second. Right. Oh, man. You Did you, did you, sorry, did you say vintage is that what you were asking for yeah you got the black okay. and white cards dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay we're, we're start off with this okay so firstly does this look at all familiar to you you recognize like this from your childhood ball, dude. Yeah, so like, like the, danger do you know what this is oh fuck me i remember the kabutops bro yo those are solid this I is the first version. They were this selling those at John's fossil, Incredible. Fossil booster box right here. I got 22 packets inside. These are the actual cards are inside. Dude, you're gonna open one, right? You, Bro, I ain't I'm not open unless one of you wants to give me a hundred bucks right now. I'm they're not them? opening. I give you Yeah, they've been weighed. These are okay, all light. Okay. All of these cards are these are all light, but that's twenty two. And I, I opened this when it was sealed, and uh, I still have all of the cards that I pulled. So that's like my my Wizard of the Coast vintage sealed stuff. Yeah, hold on to that. It's gonna. <sighs> where do you where do you keep then, that? Where do you keep that? By the way, let's dude, let's you see guys that. Want, all right, <laughs> one, one one second. I'll keep my headphones on. So you can see. We're getting a nice right, vlog guys, view here. You guys, look at this. By the way, boom! Oh, oh flexing. Damn, <laughs> right. So uh, this is my secret lair. All of oh. this in here is all. It's all Pokemon. Oh my and there's God. my secret vault. Is that a microwave? Oh. Stuff. But you no, it's, it's a safe, dude. Right. So, this is anyways, his life finally, saving. This is my this is my fucking pension, boys. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. This is my pension right here. Okay. So look at this. This right here is what I like to refer to as the holy grail. God. Pokemon's. This is oh, so the bright. complete, it, <laughs> the so complete bright. first edition base set. Every single card is accounted for in here. Every single card. Including all of the rares, the commons, uncommons, energy cards, etc. We got a little Pikachu down there. Oh, fat boy! We got a Char. Uh, remember right when there. Pikachu was? I got the. Dying. I got that Charmander in Mexican. I got the Mexican oh, yeah, Charmander. Mexican, you mean Spanish? <laughs> uh, no, not really. Yes. RS, but my, one of my most nostalgic memories as a kid is opening up those booster packs and the smell. Oh, look at that! Oh, you so know, the smell comes out, and you're just like. I like Yu-Gi-Oh cards more though. I think the Yu-Gi-Oh cards are the. Are the I was out the Pokemon. I was Pokemon. Uh, yeah, I, I did a, a bit of both. Yeah. And then in, in the back of the folder, I've got the complete Shadowless set as How well. How many Charizards the... do you own, bro? What the? I don't have. You want to see some? Char Hold up. Oh no. Got... Oh, oh no. Man. I'm just chaining a further event here. I'm sorry, no, viewers. I'm, so I'm sorting through these at the moment. These are all like newer Charizards right here. They're like full arts and stuff. What do you mean newer so got... Charizards? That's all these Charizards. Are... <laughs> these are all Charizards, dude. Like, at, like, look at this. Charizard, Charizard, boys. Oh, friggin' Charizard. Oh, damn, Charizard GX. You got some Charizard undies? Every single one of these, man. I I'll tell you, this one here, this is a German Charizard. This is from Plasma Storm. Oh, where's the cam? There he is. This is one of the first. This is a beautiful Charizard. And then these ones here are, uh, these are reprints of the old school Charizards. 
And this one's in Japanese. This one's in uh, in English. But these are yeah, evolution. These language. Dude, I got I got put like, I got loads of Charizards, man. I got Charizards for days, dude. Jeez, I, I am the Charizard king. That. I didn't expect right. to have a whole stack of but Charizards. You, uh, over? <laughs> What's that? Did we finish the segment? <laughs> Pokemon. My yeah. ass. Listen, man. Is someone gonna ask about Pokemon? I know. I know. You know, it, I'm it's, gonna. It's speak. the trigger word. It's the trigger word, and we I knew know. it, and we should have warned him before. All right, we should have warned him. Yeah, we should warn that with every guess. <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, um, Pokemon have skyrocketed in price now. Did you collect when you were younger? Do you have any? I got some. Uh, I, I got a binder. I had I had a collection, but it was you stolen did. from me. Oh, oh dude, feels... that's devastating. Yeah, all man. the kids be stealing shit. Dude. All the kids. Annoying. Well, it's never too late, dude. I mean, I'm 27 next month, mate, and I'm still going hard, so there's no excuse. Mm, yeah, so dude. The story is, my younger brother, he one day brought it, like my collection, and I had the binder everything. I kept it all sealed. But he, uh, without asking me, he brought it to uh, school to show his friends and put it under his desk. Oh, no. And during a uh, break, it was gone. It, it disappeared magically somehow <laughs> on a phone. <laughs> dude that do, do you know what's funny about that right i have a i have a charizard in my another collection one? that was my my older brother's yeah another one this is like the thing is i would never sell it it's sentimental so my brother's first charizard got stolen at school as well so the second one that he bought or got or traded i can't remember he wrote his name on the back of it luke rakes on the back of the card in like permanent marker and i have that card still oh. 20 years later oh man that's dope but, um this is the card that i was talking about earlier oh, see this card right here yo, you yeah. boys remember this typhlosion yes sir yeah, I, yeah. I remember the this, card. <laughs> but this card this is a first edition okay now i am gonna start this by saying this card is definitely not in perfect condition it's in good condition but it's not in absolute perfect condition if you got this card in perfect condition right and you sent it off to psa which is professional sports authentication. It's a company okay, out in America. Okay. It's in California. <laughs> no, I told they will you, grade your started. cards. Dude, they, they will literally grade your card <gasps> right, on the, the centering of the card. So wherever it's perfect, absolutely perfect, they will literally have a look at like if there's any like grease and shit For on your God, card. Dude. Like they're, they, they, they grade they, cards. They fix it up. I wonder if there's a way, like if it had some sort of like wall moisture, if there's a way yeah. for them to well, this conversation's well, it, drying it out. And it's, the, yeah, okay. I mean, you're not necessarily deceiving anyone. You're just cleaning up, doing the <laughs> on it. Yeah, I told sure. you, he gets into grading these cards. We're fucked, dude. It's over, buddy. He's talking about so, you send it just, in. Just, just, <laughs> just for reference, okay? Just oh, for reference. Here's a couple PSA cards that I have oh! here so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Would you we send them a binder? The fuck you send? What, you send them weekly, like postcards from a, a cellmate? What the fuck is this, bro? Right. Shut up, man. Hey, shut up, dude. <laughs> dude, week, this, this Charizard's worth more than your future, bro. So this is, is a first oh. edition. <laughs> this is a fir first edition like Dark that, Charizard. <laughs> dude, <that's laughs> the Team Rocket. And this is uh, a PSA 9, okay? So as you can see, when they take the card, they basically, they encapsulate it. And like, these things are fucking sturdy, man. Like, this ain't going nowhere. You can stack them easily. Like they're they're easy to put together. Um, this is a first edition Blastoise. This one got a PSA six, but first edition base set are just absolutely, absolutely beautiful. But but that's what they do. Back to the point. If you got this card and it came back a PSA ten, there are literally like ten of these in the world. Around ten that have got PSA tens, and the last one that sold sold for like sixteen thousand dollars. I'm yeah. not I'm not even like chatting shit on Yeah. Uh, I think so, yeah. yeah. It's insane. Like, the price on Pokemon cards is... Dude, it's nuts. How, it's much, how much yeah, could I get for this? Market. What do you think? Yeah. It's, and it's never going away anytime soon. What do you think, like, buddy? How much? Like, no. Five bucks? Ten bucks? Wait, so what's that uh, mint, sorry? Uh, how, much, how much would this be right here? Say that again, what? How, how much would this be, man? Shiny Electrode. What we got? 25 cents. Shiny Electrode. Pay my mortgage? Probably not. Depends on the condition, mate. That's pretty yeah, what, what sets it from? I don't you know, know what that is. It says stage one, but I think it, that's, that's an avoid. Oh. oh. For example, people are spending thousands of dollars on virtual skins that aren't like that aren't actually physically tangible. You know, yeah, tangible. That's true, man. So yeah. it, it makes complete sense that, that these, these cards are basically artwork. They're, I mean, they're currency. This, 
this card, the first edition Blastoise, this has been out of, this was printed 20 years ago. This will never be reprinted. This will be never. This will, this is the only time that was ever going to be printed in history. The right. first ever Blastoise that was brought out in Pokemon. This ain't coming back. Like, it, it is what it is. It's got the dates. It's authentic. It literally is a collector's piece. Do you sleep with it? Do I what with it? Sorry, I sleep with it. For good luck. Yo, here's... I would, mate, but I'll be honest, man. I don't, I don't trust my girlfriend, mate. So Yo, I keep him in the safe, dude. Yo, Look at this. Look at this, man. I got, the, I got the Spanish Charmander you had, dude. How much are these? Spanish Charmanders, bro. It's called a Gulamanda. Am I rich? Uh, can I see the back of them? They kind of look a bit fake, man. I'm not going to lie. Why would they be fake? I got the <laughs> I got the Charmeleon Spanish one, too, dude. Look at that. Oh, I just look. need the Spanish uh, Charizard. You got a Spanish Charizard I could have? Why, why have you got Spanish Pokemon Dude, I don't cards, fucking man. know. I'm looking here. I got like a, 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 a war turtle that's fucking, I think, Chinese, dude. I got a slow poke that's Japanese lettering, dude. By the way, this is a this is a perfect segment and integration for boys. Anybody watching this right now, let us know in the comments what's your favorite Pokemon. Card? Which one is it? I got a shiny for Pokemon. alligator that's in Japanese. This one's pretty sick, dude. That might go for a dollar. What do you think? Uh, yeah, yeah it, prob it probably it probably would go for a dollar. Yeah. Man, dollar. See, I can't compare my cards. You got all the PSAs and fuck. You know when it was made? It was in 1995 in Guatemala and shit. I don't know. Bullshit. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I mean, listen, it's just, you know, it's one of those things, man. I'm always on the lookout. Like, do, do you know what? I always think about RuneScape. RuneScape is very much something which there is almost like a cult following for. It's very niche, but the people who like it love it. It's like a lifestyle, right? If RuneScape were to, yeah, if RuneScape was to end tomorrow, what would be left that would be salvageable, collectible, Soups and ultimately, guys. what could you collect to make money off? And like in 10 years, people will be like, oh, I missed that RuneScape game. Oh my god, such and such is selling this on eBay. There isn't really much. They never really did that much in terms of collectibles. How much do you think Wooks' Inferno Cape would go for? Like, his, he has one that he wears. Do you think that would be like a, a very big well, piece? Dude, it, if, he threw up on, if he threw it on auction and it was like for charity, I'm sure he would get like several thousands. Right. I'm almost certain yeah. of it, yeah. So some of those, some of those things could be worth value i know curtis I has like alley and uh, stuff one of the twitch kind of went to at the runescape booth they gave out uh packets of uh cards runescape cards i never opened it but <laughs> oh nice maybe but you got a shiny were, goblin were, uh chat does anyone know what i'm talking about there were some sort of collectible cards for runescape oh, that I, sounds I, awesome i got the lumber yeah, so guide those, those might, five like, information might, but, they uh, me, my personal opinion i don't think this game is as mainstream as mm. Pokemon, oh, no, no, or, God, no, no. Pokemon is, like maybe for very very niche collectors, they they yeah. might buy it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll put it, that, dude. I'll I'll say this right now, man. I've played this game since I was a kid, man. And like, if RuneScape just were to die one day, I would be so upset, man. And yeah, I would love to have like something of RuneScape to have physically own it and be like, that was part of something I used to love. You know, it's like, I'm lucky I'm lucky that I've been given stuff by Jagex, for example, like an old school RuneScape wow. mug. Wow, you know? flexing. And I've wow. I've got like an old school RuneScape pen. Yo, Ray, yeah. can you show but us if all the shirts you have? If you're interested, by the way, $100, please. Thank you. Um, okay, so uh, if you guys were to get RuneScape, <laughs> that, that, would be, that would be a way to keep memory of it. Like, if you guys were hmm. to get a RuneScape tattoo, what would you get? RuneScape if you had, tattoo. If you had to get one RuneScape tattoo. Hmm. Mm. That's a good question, man. I like that. Because that's badass. Mm. Yeah, you like, could definitely. Have, get... I've uh, never got a tattoo, so I'm gonna take this seriously and have a proper think about what I get. You definitely get like one That's of those really prayer symbols on you, right? You no, know, I I get the Slayer skill icon because Slayer meta. Well, Dude, I saw somebody. Um, it was a picture years ago. Someone at the gym with that on, like his uh his, his bicep. It actually looked pretty cool. Like it didn't have like the 99 underneath, but it, just, oh, yeah, it was yeah. the icon. Slayer skull is kind of cool because it's like it's like ambiguous. You know, you wouldn't really know. Dude, I don't, I don't actually know, man. Because I, I've never had a tattoo, and I, I mean, I don't think any of us have tattoos. Randomly, you know. Oh, Rice got tattoos. Show him, Rice. Show him your tats. Rice, 
Oh, he's, got a, he's got a tramp stamp. Dude, don't, <laughs> don't let him play it. He takes that shirt off. You'll see. You'll see some. I don't some. have any piercings. Nothing, dude. Oh, they're both, oh, like, they're both pierced, ima dude. Imagine if Reed took his shirt off and it just head to toe covered in <laughs> One of those dragon tats just surrounding his body. A dragon right. all over his uh, body. Dude. Oh. It, yeah, dude, if I got a tattoo as RuneScape, it would have to be some sort of badass monster in the game, for sure. Uh, really? Um, uh, yeah, that's yeah, what I was thinking. I, I don't think I could get, like, uh... Oh, there are symbols. Like, know, like, do you guys know what the Yakuza symbols. is, right? Um, the Yakuza, and they usually have these sweet body tats, right? I would get yeah. something like that, where you have Ulm just coming out my back, you know what I'm saying, dude? Like, one of those, like, uh, Yakuza tattoos, just Ulm, just chilling there or something. Oh my god. Imagine popping that bad boy off at like the swimming pool. What would they but here's the thing, Mike? How relevant is Om gonna be ten years later? Oh, it's not. No one's gonna know it, but they're gonna think, dude, that's a dragon, right? Because if you paint Om as a like one of those like dragon tattoos they do in like oh, old dragon. old Japanese style, it's still gonna look fucking sick. You know, they're not gonna be like, What's that dragon from? They're like, that's that's like a realistic version of it, you know. Or well, realistic. if you're gonna do it realistic, it's gonna look like fucking some white rat on the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Might not look as good. I'm sorry, I didn't get that. What'd you say? Oh, so I've always wanted a, a tattoo, but is this a question to Rai? You know why I haven't got one? Why? Because yeah. uh, in uh, Asian culture, right, in yeah. Japan, uh, you can't actually enter certain bathhouse or establishments if you have a visible open tattoo. Uh, wow. And you really like bathhouses, huh? But it, you really yeah, like bathhouses, dude. Uh, uh, but yeah, if I got one, it would be uh, the symbol of sacrifice from the anime Berserk. Oh, like right oh, here. Uh, oh yeah, the over yeah, yeah. Mm. That ain't RuneScape, but, buddy. Yeah. What about RuneScape, man? What would you do? Yeah, for Berserk, that's nuts. I could see uh, probably the Slayer symbol. Probably yeah. the Slayer symbol, yes. but like in, in, in a different way, like stretched out in different. Way. I know, like a lot of people have Slayer uh, tattoos, but yeah. it's just one of those things. Like it, it would stick out the most to me. So here, here's a question for you, Nate. What is your all-time favorite anime? Berserk. Berserk. Dude, I, yeah. I'm really sorry. I don't think I've ever watched Berserk, man. Yeah, I'm gonna be is, you can't 100% appreciate Berserk if you don't read it. Cause... Be careful if you read it in public. Uh, one of those. One of those. Right. You're right. But, um, it? Well, the manga. The, manga. That's <laughs> it. the first season, the it, it it's so visceral. It'll make you feel things that you've never felt before it, it's so different like it's about revenge right and uh um, yeah. it just gives you the, these feels that oh, i just sad. haven't gotten from any oh. actually not even just anime from but from a lot of mediums yeah yeah um, oh okay. uh, Bonsa, have you watched the movies or did you watch the I original tv movies. show yeah you and all the cgi the, 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 the oh season. you didn't like the cgi yeah. no, well yeah. the movies um they don't go heavy on the CGI unless it's like the war scenes, but it's not bad. Like, oh, talking about the, the the show when it goes CGI, I didn't oh, like that. No, no, no. I'm, I'm talking about the movie. I'm talking about the movie. Man, I, I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to check it out. But on the yeah, on the subject, sorry, uh, one more. You watched the original show, right? Like the OG, like the, you know, age, of course. Yeah, yeah. So like, um, uh, the movie's good because that that basically predates what happens in the original show because like. The story is very complex, and I don't think you read the manga, right? So, yeah, it, on it. it goes it goes even before that, like that show, the show, the original show, I believe. Uh, or, yeah. So, yeah. when it comes to anime, I'm actually a, a hobbyist. It's one of those things I'm I'm very actually lucky to have because it, I got to the point with watching Netflix or just movies in general where I've run out of good content. Yeah, and, uh, anime is open for me, so I'm yeah. I'm quite yeah. Happy about There's a lot of crazy shit in there. Man, so yeah, on, Berserk on, nuts, man. Berserk's actually nuts. On the subject of Berserk making you feel things you've never felt before, I, I can relate. I had the same thing with Attack on Titan, dude. Oh, yeah, I know I'm, I'm, a, I'm a filthy casual to the anime world, but I love Attack on Titan. Absolutely Bro, love Attack it. Attack on Titan has the potential to be like one of the best shows I've ever seen. Because like the yeah. last is coming out this year. and uh, It's being wrapped up. Yeah, yeah it's going to be insane. And that's think, not common um, with a lot of anime, right? A lot of anime don't actually complete... Um, yeah, the whole show. Yeah, usually, but the Tag and Titan, like, it's gonna it's gonna be done this year. So, do they have the, the, the do the writers have the ending figured out? Well, because it's based on the manga, right? So they already know the manga is about to be finished. That's why. 
Okay. So they uh, like like um. So it depends, right? Sometimes studios they'll pick up on incomplete manga, and and when they initially started, they won't actually know whether or not the manga is going to finish. But they just know that there's enough material in the manga that they can start it, and if um if the pacing goes off the rails, as in the you know catches up to the manga, then they'll do their own ending usually, and and that's where most of the time it ends up sucking because like they rush it, they have to rush it and make the ending. Yeah, and then there's mm-hmm. other times where. Uh, studios will wait for a, a pretty well-established manga. Like, you know, it's really deep in, and you know that they're pretty consistent, and it's pretty much like a guarantee they'll finish. And that's kind of like the Attack on Titan right there. Because we don't want a Game of Thrones scenario happening with Attack on Titan. Oh, no. Yeah, I yeah. personally yeah. enjoyed well, Game of Thrones. Right? Game I'm of that Thrones. one guy you that enjoyed the ending one? Yes, I fucking yeah. loved you, it. You, no. The last season? The last season? I didn't expect it. That was man. crazy. I didn't expect <laughs> any of that shit, man. <laughs> We Not. we need we need a petition Whatever. in the comment section to replace Mr. Mint. Dude, Mouth. you know what? They probably would. I've been reading the comments. They they probably would, man. What would be a good replacement, dude? What do you think? Right. Think about it, man. Right? They could have fleshed it out with like two to three seasons for the ending. It yeah, bro. Okay, uh, so, yeah. uh, Mike, I would have to politely disagree with you on on you on that because I do like it's surprise fine. endings. However, it has to um lead up to it there has to be clues that 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 adds up to the ending right yeah it was that's so what that, i will i will say it was it was a little fast paced for me but personally game of thrones is one of those things where it's like you're watching and all of a sudden like a whole marriage is murdered right in front of you right you're just kind of like expecting fast paced things to happen mm. so i was just sitting there and i was like holy fuck Dude. everything's happening right now this person's dying there's a war going yep. on i wasn't even caught up in like they're trying to make it all fast i was like this is just i mean Re, uh, sorry, Ro, Ro, Min, I, I do agree with you, but like, I think the biggest thing for me, right? First episode of Game of Thrones, okay? First fucking episode ever. You get introduced to the White Walkers, okay? And it is such a slow progression oh, you're of right. seeing snippets into like how this race, which is like world ending, this is like a world threat, is taking the fuck over. It gets a dragon, dude. It has an army. And then all of a sudden, the fucking little girl kills the king in, like, one episode. It's so anticlimactic. Yeah, it, it, the pacing was so bad. No, no, I, I I'm sorry for spoilers, boys, but, like, let me, let they me. just... They rushed it, man. He was too busy. He, had to, he needed to go work on Star Wars, dude. Like, they gave yeah, up on that show the last season. About that. I, I know I know. Bonesaw probably knows this. It's because the writers... um. So, you know, they cut up to the story. Like, let's let's just... Because it's, the story's based on the book, right? The book already... Uh, it's, it's been on break for years and years. And they never got to that part of w- where the final season was. And it was up to the writers to figure out how to do the ending. And mm. instead of doing, like, you know, two... Like, instead of doing, like, for example, one whole season for the whole White Walker stuff, they decided to cram it into, like, one episode. And instead of doing, like, you know, the whole throne thing, you know, the final part of the show in a season they decided to cram that in like two episodes so yeah it was really bad pacing because what the hell was yeah. that about you know, I, like, I will say in in my defense because everyone is uh is on the other side of this argument here um it, it was fast it was fast it did happen yeah. but i was still pumped to see this yeah. all go down and compared to anything out right now beginning ending yeah. story filming in two spots multiple narratives it's mm-hmm. it nothing comes close even if you guys don't enjoy the ending yeah. nothing still comes close to even the ending for any show out yet right it's still miles and leagues above anything entertainment wise so comparably it, mm-hmm. it's still a god show no matter what i, think it, it I was, personally enjoy the ending was good. are you talking about in terms of tv shows like in terms of like i mean even like what vikings and some of these other uh, shows that try to get a nice dude, medieval I factor I before, they don't compare I would agree. it was my favorite show of all time up to season four well, I, yeah. but what else? What else compares? Uh, just entertainment. No, Breaking Bad was better. Bro. Bad. Bad. I'm sorry, man. Breaking. They didn't have right. scenes where like if, you just yeah. murdered the whole fucking wedding cast. I know, dude, I, know, but I think you're comparing it in an emotional level. I'm I mean, comparing like it to a humanity <laughs> makes entertainment level. I mean, this is all made dude. by humans. This is just some top tier entertainment. If yeah, if yeah, I yeah. may make a comparison real quick and a like a little, I'm looking at this right. So I said this on my stream a while back. Game of Thrones didn't just touch the nerdy, geeky, niche part of the internet, which is like gamers and so on. It, touched it went fucking mainstream, dude. I had yeah. girls on Facebook who have probably never even seen, like, fucking never heard of the Lord of the Rings, 
who are watching Game of Thrones and were loving it. Yeah, it had such a huge great. audience. Yeah, it was great. It, it, man. It, it, the it, fantasy with the mainstream that hasn't yeah. been done before. Yeah. I mean, and, the Lord of the Rings type of shows got it, got, got hooked into it. It was massive. Yeah. yeah. It, it was enormous. And there is no denying that the last, at least the last season, yeah, the last season like, was just too rushed. Yeah. It know, was, they needed an extra, like you said, two to three more seasons. And then it may have felt really well done, but it was, it was rushed. Because the whole White Walker thing, bro, we waited, I waited years for this thing to come <laughs> out. And it, yeah. it was a good. Okay, if if you look at it holistically, it was a good show. I just yeah. I think for for diehard fans, they were let down because the quality has dropped in the in the last season. Yeah, but overall, yeah. It's still a great show. It's because what I fun. enjoyed about Game of Thrones was the pacing. Like it, it was, you know, the pacing was really well done. Uh, the previous seasons, but then the last season was just it went like ten x speed. It was ten x speed. So yeah, yeah. I don't That's know, man. That, I love definitely. it. I like, like no, no, loved no, no. every bit of it. I was happy at the end and the beginning, man. I mean, yeah, like I enjoyed the episode in terms of the emotional side. Dude, of when it. that but, like, shit went spoiler, down, like, I was so spoiler. surprised because I don't read the spoilers. Like, oh fuck! Yeah, it, it's just a critical part of me is disappointed because, like, a lot of those characters, like, they died to falling bricks. You know, I'm like, yo, are you serious? You know, and then like the guy, like, <laughs> he just stabbed the acting. Are you serious? That's I it. I love the way you say that, right? <laughs> I'm like, and this the dragon, right? This there's one dragon that destroys the entire sea, but then there's one dragon that just gets shot, one shot, and dies. I'm like, are you serious? Like, what? I'm so confused. Like, what happened? You know? No, like, I'll uh, give it to you. I would have loved to have seen a multiple episodes of that fight. Yeah, I would have loved exactly. to seen it stretched out, hundred percent. Imagine if White Walker arc that part was one whole season or like at least four episodes or yeah, something i would have been down i would have been down but overall i think this show being made raised the bar entertainment wise story wise i mean they were shooting on like multiple fucking areas in the different parts of the world for one episode different like, film sets them, going on or, uh, writing just like raised a tear raised a tear yeah, for entertainment like, yeah, like the production value was insane like you know i mean I'll, I'll always give them props for production value you know, cgi was amazing you know like like the action the way every character felt unique and its own personality you don't get a lot of that in Mm. shows now a lot of that is just shitty acting this is beautiful that was it that's the big issue i will say this as well man like where you said about the game being uh the game of thrones being quite like unpredictable and main characters getting killed off left right and center you're totally right but i feel that like towards the end towards the end of game of thrones that stopped happening so much and it became a little bit more like it was fairy really tale cliche. predictable cliche yeah. in a way it, it's like of course Arya stark would be the girl who goes through the mist with the dagger do you know what i mean it's like i don't and know like the main character survive it came a little bit too fairy tale towards maybe the end. it was a mixture of uh reasons one of the reasons also is they ran out of a book uh source yeah. material yeah. Yeah. dialogue Tyrion, for example his dialogue was so Fair. good in the seasons so bad he was, <laughs> it was yeah. like a they were completely different character yeah Oh, here's a, yeah, here's a question. Who was your favorite character? Mine was the Hound. I loved the Hound. He was awesome. Peter Dinklage. Peter Dinklage. Every time, dude. Fucking love that <laughs> guy. Tyrion. Yeah. Honestly, I yeah, I thought Tyrion was great until the end. Because oh, even at the end, man, I love it. Oh, love it. Sorry, guys. Absolutely. Yeah, no, he fair. just definitely changed a lot. I went for me because he was pragmatic, uh, extremely uh, intelligent. He played the game extremely well, and. Mm. He have won the whole game for for me dude see yeah. i i'm a i'm a lot more of a simplistic man i like the hounds because of the the pub scene where he yeah. said if another word comes yeah. out yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the hound got a great redemption towards the end like he oh, was the probably one of the, he's probably one of the only few characters that actually like had a good resolution towards the end yeah yeah like, I, I like i did like the way that was wrapped i feel like arios was terrible because she did all this training you know all this like secret powered stuff and she never even used it you know towards the end I would, yeah, li- so I I would like, like to see her use it. True. Some of that. You know, I'm like, all this build up, like, like what, what are you throwing her training? But she never even uses this stuff. All she does do is know, hide. Do you like, know what so could have made the end in 10 times better? If she used her training and was actually like one of the, uh, the, the Night King's like advisors and she just like stabbed him in the back. Yeah, like, I'd have been yeah. like, damn, like, I didn't see that shit coming. She used her. But, but no, she comes. She flying out of the mist. Of she did a, literally a sleight of hand, and that was the end of it. You know, that's all you need, baby. IRL, sleight of the hand. 
Well, no, because then you'd be like, why don't all the the other higher because uh, they don't expect it. Her? I don't know, man. No, they should have noticed her. Like, Dude, she's sneaky. She has no right. face. I'm gonna put no an end face. to this conversation. Yeah, right. Attack on Titan is the best sure. show that was ever made yeah, and will ever be I, made. You have to watch it. It's so yes. freaking good. Oh my god. First season anyway. though, it's all action, but you're like, you don't understand what's going on. But once you get to season three, you're like, Briggs, this is all your shit. fault. You pulled out the Pokemon cards and look where we're at now. All you, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I can just pick that, that right show of the year for me. Great, uh, yeah, <laughs> great in my head. We yeah, were great. derailed. Boys, this has been a fucking awesome podcast, by the way. Yeah. I feel like we've talked about, like, we went way back in the past to RuneScape Classic, went all the way through the evolutions of combat, and we came out on the other end of Game of Thrones, man. It's been, it's been a good podcast. Um, yeah. Is there anything that we're going to cover or anything else you guys would like to talk about? You got any more Charizards? I don't know. I mean, uh, well, I mean, we could talk about the updates that they're trying to pull. I went through them sure pretty thing. briefly. There wasn't, I mean, dude, we can go in. All right. We got some like flare mobs, uh, like superiors. <laughs> so we're going to go over Pole 71 and the Frogs Enclave updates. Uh, here's yeah, Superior Slayer creatures. Yeah. So they're adding more superiors Spiky Turoff, Shadow Worm, Guardian Drake. Colossal Hydra. Very look at the look at the Drake. I think that's a Drake, that's right? Cool. Yeah. Badass. But I hate Drakes, so I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I hate uh, them, but it's it's cool looking, man. Yeah, pretty yeah. dope. Our Do they stuff? all get the same drops? Like they imbued hard and uh yeah. yeah. Just different levels would impact their rarity. I think Rice said it best when he said this game's turning into Slayerscape, right? Oh, it, oh, it was, bro. I mean, we could talk about still the, is. the still Slayer is. boss master. I'm so glad they scrapped it for now because did they? Okay, good. Yeah, that was nuts. Scrapped. Yeah, they scrapped it for now because, like, I think one of the core appeals was being basically you were able to do Slayer all, uh, boss all day through Slayer and you get Slayer Helm effect. And um, I honestly don't think that would be great for the game just because it would make every meta Slayer for bossing. So there's already too many game. Slayer masters. Yeah. But um, you guys know Zulu, right? Like, his, yeah. I was watching his, he was talking yeah, about Zulu, that. Yeah. His opinion about it is that um, he the game is trying to make everything relate to Slayer. Yep. The boss should be separated. Like not everything should have a Slayer helm. That's bonus. exactly my my take on that. Because it'd be weird. Imagine like, oh, I'm gonna do raids, but hold on, guys, I gotta get tasked real quick. You know, like, bro, no, just go and do raids, man. Like, stop. You know, it's just AIDS. By next year, we're gonna be like, all right, guys, fish a thousand sharks for your Slayer test. You know, it'd be like weird as fuck. I it's can't. one of those things that like you wouldn't want to do raids unless you had the most efficient way to do it. Yeah, you know, just, exactly. It's just, it would yeah, it become meta, mate. A lot of things in RuneScape are just like meta scape. And if you're at raids without like a Slayer Helm, people would eventually uh, yeah, just be like, "What are you, what are you doing? Like, what wh why are you why are you doing raids without a Slayer Helm?" I, I think you're right, and also I think that it kind of um takes away a little bit of a skill. Like for people who can actually solo raids, for example, it's like if you can do that without being on Slayer task, it kind of undermines that. Wait, Those Ulm has a Slayer task? You can get Ulm? Well, no, that's that's, that's, that's what they're out. polling, dude. Uh, yeah. Why? Dumb. Because every uh. boss would have been Slayer. Like, Nightmare would have been Slayer helmed and everything. So God, Yeah. Dude. I, I feel like, like it does... Right yeah. I'll I think right it does now. undermine, like, the people that yeah. could... Re like, yourself. You solo Nightmare all day, man. It's like... And you've done that without a Slayer helm. If I was yeah. in your... I would be fuming, man. I'd yeah, be like, it's, no. I mean, I'll be honest <laughs> with you, bro. I remember soloing raids with a whip back in the day, you know, before, like, the lands and stuff. But but well, whatever, you, I mean, I'd probably be so mad at, like, when the game... Oh, and and these of you guys, about, like, the first day of raid one, I can't imagine how exciting that would have been. Just oh, yeah, trying to figure out all the different metas and stuff. And yeah, I spent metas. four hours doing my first raid, and we finally completed I got uh, I got, like, 100 points. Damn. <laughs> yeah dude i remember so the first the first raid i did on day one we got to vasa and it took us four hours to get to vasa and we had to leave the raid because we couldn't figure it out yeah, like racy. we couldn't figure it out same the same thing. Thing. dude we were in the same idea. raid right rexy wait were you yeah. with devious if yeah were... i made the video we can oh, watch the highlights bro. yeah oh my god we fucking man. got murdered we had yeah, no idea what we were doing new yeah, we didn't know how to like deal with the Fossa nuke. So like, I remember the second raid we did, we got four hours in Fossa, and then we went into the room. We all got teleported, and then he just it's just one shot all of us. And we're like, all right, um, I think we're just gonna be, we're done. We're just <laughs> <laughs> people were just getting yeah. teleported. No one knew why. Oh, yeah. bro, I so actually how fast did Wooks beat it? Like, they, honestly, day? people were completing it within a day, within the first day. 
but it was really like inefficient though people are still doing like hour rates you know yeah yes yeah, so, uh, tom you were saying um i was just gonna go back to the whole uh the slayer task thing re i actually a lot of people have been asking me what i thought about the slayer boss map monster yeah, oh, that's task awesome. on my stream and awesome. i i've awesome. said to them i've said hey like i think that it's kind of cool uh and i said but i've heard a, a lot of other streamers raise concerns about you know it being at the nightmare corporal beast and also at raids and uh i was kind of like really looking forward to hearing your opinion on it actually because i wasn't really sure what you guys i had time to catch your stream and hear what you said but now hearing it i think that you're actually bang on like you're right i i don't think that raids it it definitely shouldn't be a slayer task it should yeah. be something that it, it's just a really good money maker it's a hard pvm challenge and you go and do it but you don't get assigned it i actually yeah. i agree with that i i really do agree with that i think that you're um, right on the like money there Here's a bit more like uh, empirical, right? Like just think about it this way: most bosses you can already do through Slayer tasks. So the whole efficiency thing through Slayer, honestly, it feels like PVMing. We, uh, it's like seventy percent Slayer at this point, overall. Like it's gotta be more than that, actually. It's, it's like it's like seventy, eighty percent. And if they do the boss Slayer thing, it's pretty much ninety nine percent. That that's pretty much yeah. it. It becomes that. So it's already bad enough as it is. Like Slayer has already dominated this game yeah. so hard. Like every like there's always a few massive Slayer updates every year. Right? But but everything, every other aspect of the game, we don't get that level of consistency. We need to stray away from Slayer. Price like, is a so. big advocator of this. I mentioned him calling it Slayerscape once and just boom, rant. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I look, I'm not I like I know this because dude, I have like 45 mil sex on my on my iron. Like, no I do I do like, 45 mil XP. What the like, fuck, I buddy? Oh my and god. That's how I know, I've done so much through Slayer. Like that's a lot. And, shit, and I don't want them to continue that trend, man, because it's it's just like I think what makes this game amazing is the ability to make choices and not feel like you're 100 forced to do something right if, if, and if they do the slayer thing everyone's gonna a lot of more people are gonna feel compelled they have to do slayer to do bossing and that'd be uh just yeah that'd be bad honestly just lack of choices man you know yeah i i sure. agree with that man i'm on your side dude and but, thanks. But you know i think boss slayer could work if for example uh you know how like it's in slayer itself there are actual slayer bosses right so i was thinking if they want to do something like this in the future they should make sure that Slayer Helm effect does not work on non-Slayer bosses, but works on Slayer bosses. Like, so if you were assigned Sire, for example, Slayer Helm should work on there because it's a Slayer boss, right? You naturally have to do it through Slayer. So you should, you know, I think that's okay. But like a non-Slayer boss is like Corp or Nightmare. We should, they should not have the Slayer Helm effect because they're not Slayer creatures mm. necessarily. You're, you're just, we're just kind of making it convenient to do the boss through Slayer, but we're, we're not we're supposed to make it easier, right? It's convenient to do Slayer because you already get the XP, you get all the, you know, the, the drops, the, the bonus drops, whatever from the boss Slayer, but we shouldn't also make it easier. Like, how much more bonuses do you need, right, to incentivize well, you to do a boss, right? Dude, like, it's insane. If I can give you my perspective, so yeah. when I read this update, so I have a different perspective to you on this. Um, yeah. When I read the update, I saw that it said, it specifically said about people that do Terrell skipping. And if you guys have tuned into my stream over the last month, all I have been doing is going to Konar, if I don't like the task, straight to Terrell. Get myself a task and skip like that until I get like Hydra, Aviancies, any God War dungeon and so on. Like a boss task. It's all I'm really interested in doing for the money. And um, from my perspective, I saw it like this. If there was to be this boss, a Slayer uh, Master that gave you a guaranteed boss, it would effectively, for me, would mean that I would go there at the first start of my day. I would get a task. If I didn't like it, I would I would use the reroll that they said they give you daily. Get the second task. If I didn't like that, I would then just go back to doing Konar Slaying and straight back to Terrell. And that was just going to be it. So the way that I viewed the Slayer Boss Master was it was basically just a guaranteed shot at two extra boss tasks per day, which could be Aviancies or Hydra that I would enjoy doing. That was my perspective on it, which I didn't really have a problem with, to be honest. But I did feel weird about the Corporal Beast, Nightmare, and also the raids, uh, just because I felt like it undermined the people who have already been able to accomplish that yeah. without the Slayer Hound bonuses. Yeah. Damn, you guys yeah. really no, into this bossing. That's a fair point, too. You know, that's a fair point. Uh, the whole devaluing thing. You know, what I mean, I've accepted my, I've accepted this fact that like all the stuff that I did, did four years ago is going to be devalued as hell. You know what I mean? Because you know the game progresses, uh, things get easier. You know, stuff like that. 
So I can't be too salty, you know, like if somebody did the same thing I did four years ago, but obviously nowadays they have better stuff to to do it, right? But, you know, it's inevitable. So I, I'm like somewhat over that, right? But but the my big point is the diversity. You know what I mean? I love it when people can make choices and not ha- feel like there's only one. Because yeah. on Twitch, I see it so often, bro. People are always like, what's the most efficient way to do this? What's the most efficient way to play this game? You know what I mean? Mm. Like, it's crazy. It's it's like, bro, like, just do whatever you want, man. You know? I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm more happy if you just I do hate that efficiency want. shit. I really do. Yeah. So it's I taking mean, over. You know, I can't help it. I'm older now. And I, you know, I think efficiently as well. But like, but like, I, you know, the joy of the game is making your own choices. You know what I mean? Yeah. Most, it's of, not, the time, dude. most of the time, right? It's like. It's just preference, anyways, you know. Yeah. So I, so I'll just. I say. What you want, man? Sorry, my most most common question is, Rexy, what monster should I kill to make money? And I'm just like, okay, All right, kill a bunch of monsters, mm-hmm. find the monster which is good money and you can actually tolerate. And I was like, yeah. if there's a monster that you can kill and you can kill it for like a week, or you can kill it and you can chill at the same time, and it's not like a chore, then stick with that. And then mix it up occasionally. And like people say to me, what should I kill Zora or Vorkath? And it's like, which one do you dislike less? Exactly. It's like, wh- exactly. Which, yeah. which one Which one Preference. can you just do and just chill to it? And I, I said, because if you're doing something which you genuinely don't enjoy, and it's all personal preference, you're going to burn out. It's as simple as that. Everyone burns out because I think people get too stuck in the mentality of, I must do what's meta. I must do what the yeah. best streamer is doing and so on. When the reality is, like, boys, we're playing a fucking video game. You're supposed to have fun. You're supposed to do the things which you enjoy doing. It shouldn't be a chore. Yeah, do the mean. things that you enjoy doing. That's the bottom line. Like, yeah. sometimes you got to do some boring stuff to get to where you want. And that's okay. Yeah. Because, like, for example, like, uh, Barrels Clubs. I mean, the only way to get it is through questing. There's no alternative. But like, yeah. but a lot of times it's just more like choices, you know. Like when it comes to killing what boss, how to make money, a lot of those are just what you want, you know. Just try a few things, do the things you like. That's, hmm. that's pretty much it. You know? It it, it um, really is just a it's personal preference. Like on it. my on my account, I have almost like five thousand demonic gorilla kills, and demonic yeah. gorillas are quite like you have to pay attention. But I've got it down to the point where. I can just kind of, I can like AFK it, dude. And I kind of, I know what's happening because I've done it so much and it's chill for me. But to some people, they would hate having to constantly change their prey Mm -hmm. attack styles. Whereas for me, it's kind of like engaging and I like it and I can do it to a point where it feels like I'm kind of like hybrid in another player, but they're not very good and they're predictable. So I Mm -hmm. kind of like get into the groove of doing it. And because I've got the method down, I can basically do it while watching YouTube, reading the chat. It's just chill for me, and I, I enjoy it, you know? And also, it's got a nice drop that's 16 mil right now, so it's it's not bad money either. Zenites are 16? Yeah. I, I think I think they're about 16 mil, ah, yeah. They went up. By the way, guys, yep. we're two hours, eight minutes in. Um, I'm down to go <laughs> a little bit longer, but... Uh, we got to give me some yeah. notice if we're going to go three, four hours, man. <laughs> no, that, all right, let's 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 finish this uh, this poll and then we'll, we'll call it a day. That's cool. It's just well, it's been a good podcast, man. There's not, there's not, there's not much. I mean, other than the, the new, like, this is the poll, right? Poll oh, 71. We quickly talk about the Gazette because. Um, the Gazette has, it's, so, it's not so really Mike, a quick Mike, when are you talk. getting a uh, 46 mil uh, Slayer XP? <laughs> Never. Uh, <laughs> Twisted League. <laughs> I don't know how you do that, bro. I'm 90 Slayer. I still um, remember your Iron Man streams, man. Dude, I I, I got into that's Twisted how League. You, uh, man, that's how I got into Mint because Aloha one time hosted this guy. I'm like, yo, this weave, bro. Like, <laughs> sick. Yeah, I remember man. you had like Etsy on or something. You had like some Pokemon stuff, you know, on your stream. I was like, oh, this guy's a weave. We're chilling. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know. There's too much to go over. I think we really nailed this oh, podcast. The house, so. uh, the house project yeah. from Ash is really good. I mean, it's just too yeah. big. Look at this thing. We should have went into this at the beginning. <laughs> oh, no, no. I just want to quickly talk about the house one because that's oh, just Oh, okay. We're, let me just control Yeah, so Mod Ash is basically making storage in there the house is. even better. You can He's making it so you can store multiple sets of the same thing. And he's also making it so that you can store incomplete sets. In multiple the costume room rework here's kind of like um it's nice oh i saw this on twitter oops yeah, yeah, yeah. it's gonna be so far, good like head. imagine how much bank space you're gonna save it's gonna be nuts I'm, i think i'm gonna save like 50 Where bank spaces fucking... <laughs> i hit the space <laughs> bar there it goes it closed it all yeah. out my bad yeah um, dude this is gonna be so good 
don't know. Just... Although there's a concern for Ultimate Iron Man because uh, they'll gain some significant advantages. Though. Oh, I bet. Unless they don't make it work for Ultimate Iron Man. I think I'm not sure about that one. But at least for the regular normal players, non ultimates, where wait, but if be ultimates, a... all ultimates gain the advantage, there's nobody has an advantage. Yeah, yeah, but like uh, the ultimates uh, community are concerned because it will make ultimate in general easier because you're able to store right. incomplete stuff, and that means you don't have to like camp one place, you know, to like uh, to finish it. They don't have to. They can get one thing stored, go somewhere else. So, so that's like their concern. I mean, uh, I, at least for us non ultimate Ironmans, this would be a really good update. Would this help them get faster crafting supplies? I mean, it would give them more space to do anything, really. Because like right now, if you have incomplete set of something, you 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 lose out of the space. <laughs> Mike gets it. Mike gets oh, wait, it. Oh wait, I don't get it. Yeah, I'm sorry. Nah. Oh, nah. oh yeah, you're talking about your yo. That's yeah, a good also... topic, man. I know, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that's a good topic. But I don't know if you want to talk about it. No, I mean, I honestly wouldn't mind, but I think we're gonna yeah time yeah. Dude, yeah, we, we should have we too. should have a bone saw v two, mate. You're yeah. more than welcome to come back yo, for another yo, podcast down the line. I had so much fun. I didn't even realize like two hours went by. <laughs> oh, but by the way, Min, on that old screen skate post, one final thing that I think you will like in the other news section, which is where all PvP updates seem to fall. <laughs> it says, okay, while the bounty hunter emblem and reward system is due for removal in the near future. Before that's ready, players are now asked to spend time outside of the Ferox Enclave buffer zone in the wilderness before they can be assigned a target. Yo, so, what? from what I'm guessing, that means that you can't get a target unless you're chilling in the wilderness outside of the Enclave. Which I guess is kind of cool, because then you could go there and like make a video on it or something. If I, you, I, you, know, you know they need an immunity timer after you get a kill, too. Because uh, you can just get PJ'd instantly and then die. re TB'd at a bounty world I've, I've had it happen to me so there needs to be an immunity but that's sick i like that yeah um all right let's wrap it up uh mr nate where can the people find you man plug your stuff um www.twitch.tv slash mint mad cow <laughs> <laughs> right here boys right twitch.tv forward slash bone soul old school runescape and uh we'll have all of his social medias links down below make sure you guys go and follow and uh dude it was a real honor to have you on the podcast man it really thank was thank you guys so much for having yeah, me man. great time great, great time. time man